right, good afternoon, wrestling fans. Major releases for the WWE today, so I was going to go live around 2, but I guess uh, we're going to do this earlier. And not only that, me and Jake are going to record podcasts today, and we may still do that, but we're definitely going live for this. Uh, because these are a lot of major names, and the first thing I can think off the top of my head is, I mean, there's really not... It, it's weird. It's a mix. It's a mixed feeling. Like, like, I feel like Lana and Braun Strowman being released is 100% a good idea. Like, no shit. Release these people. And, you know, even Aleister Black, you would think, but it's like, I, I still don't blame Aleister Black for anything, and I still think that they didn't even try. Like, so it's like I'm not, I'm a little bit baffled he, at that he's one back though, Joe he just redebuted with this new gimmick on Friday and they must have thought that didn't and Vince must have hated it that's got to be what it is I I wonder if it's just still heat with his wife yeah I mean we heard originally they wanted to let him go because of her but then they they found you know some value in him and he had a few people stand up for him in the back and thus he was saved and repackaged so I wonder if he lost some of those supporters, or they're just worried that uh, I really I don't know what I think Vince. Saw, I mean, I think coming he, back at WWE and then she's not. And I think so Vince hated know. it. He must have hated it. He must have saw he, it and been well, like, "No." We heard several alleged reports that that Vince was very, very, very angry at Raw and how Raw turned out this week. We heard that he has he watched Raw. Mad. Like, but what's funny about that is that it's the same thing as every week. It's horrible every week. Like, what is he on crack? You know what I mean? Like, what is he watching the other weeks? If this week was so bad, what does he watch the other weeks if that's true? Oh, you know? no no doubt about it. But I guess, um, you know, it, it just in his mind, the, the initial uh, Ms. TV segment overran by eight or nine minutes. Oh. That was a big issue for him. And then uh, apparently he was very allegedly angry with how the Lana match turned the tag team match with the women. Mm -hmm. And apparently he was fired up so, after that because it looked terrible. So literally all the things we complained about on the review, because we were like, I said, Miz put me to sleep. I changed the channel. and then, it was too long. Right. And he complained about it being went too on. long, allegedly. And then he was not happy with the Lana match. And now Lana's let go. Yeah. And we said I mean, they've pushed her for weeks. But apparently he, he was that pissed off about how bad this match looked. And we drilled her the other night. We said, like, get because I it mean, was just terrible. Get her out of the ring. What is she doing? And now she's People fired. Are trying to wrestle. And it looks like she's trying to do acrobatics in a failed gym routine. It just didn't look good. So and we've I, all we all know that they themselves killed Braun Strowman over two yes. years ago. About two years ago, they killed Braun Strowman. At WrestleMania, when that match had concluded and all was said and done with him, we had said even though he won, it was like he beat Shane. Now what? There, There is no saving him. And then they ruined him again with the triple threat that he lost. And then he disappears. They always made him look like a moron. And it, it's to no fault of his own. I guess. He, I mean, you can't, it's not like WWE once was, you don't get to fight and, and stand up against corporate and say, I don't want to do this gimmick. You know, give me a mic because this is what happens. They, they kick you out. Right. It, it's not that climate anymore. You know, even if you had the Rock and Stone Cold coming into NXT nowadays and going to the main roster, they wouldn't be who they were then. There's no way. Why is you need, a, you need a certain formula and, and magic and a little bit of luck? We don't have that. This morning, and I swear to you, I was talking to my buddy Patrick, and I'm like, I heard that Aleister Black, Bray Wyatt, and Keith Lee are going to be fired today. I'm like, how crazy is that? He's wow. like, really? Those are some huge names. That'll never happen. I didn't hear about Braun, but I said Aleister, Keith Lee, and, Bra and Bray. Bray was the shocking one to me. Well, I got to be honest. There were several news outlets over the past 24 hours, and I, I don't know who to give credit to on the first one, but I had seen it on even on Twitter it said, I know Fightful has been up to date with most yeah, of it. Yeah, so. major names being released, and I was like, whoa. And then even five hours ago, there were people saying, like, we now know major names are being released. Yeah, we absolutely know. I, I had heard those three names this morning, but I didn't believe it because all three of those are massive. Now, two of them didn't get released, but I keep hearing there's more names to come, several more and, and someone big. And it's like, okay, what are we to expect? Now, Keith Lee, uh, you know, I could see them letting him go because there's been so much controversy around where has he been? They sent him to the main roster. It was very weird. It didn't work. They gave him this start and stop push. He would win. He would lose. He would win. He would lose. And then they made him look ridiculous. And then they took him off TV. 
We don't know if it's a health issue. We don't mm-hmm. know if it's a Vince McMahon issue that they just don't like Keith. We heard that he, they wanted to retrain him at one point in the performance center. I, I mean, the, the, the stories around this with Keith Lee have been exhausting I almost to try and feel, figure out what's going on. I almost feel with Keith Lee that Vince was like, I really like this guy. He looks great. And then he got out there, and then Vince thought, like, yeah, he's got a lot of potentials, but th- this is what we need to do. And I feel like Vince was like, you know, like he likes him, but he also thought, wow, we need to change all these things about you. Like, and that's what it feels yeah. like to me with Vince. Cause it's like, do this, do that, do the other thing. You know, he didn't get rid of him, but I, 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 maybe he will because I don't, I hope not, but you well, know, I think, I he's, sound like a health, I think he's, he's got a health issue. That's really, yeah, what, that, I really that's, believe that's what, that's it, what it comes down to. It, it could be. And I hope that's not the case, but no, I think it is. It, it very well could be. It seems to be the most logical because only because not, yeah, if, if it's not, then it's really then wow, like then it's really then it's weird. a real failure on WWE's part. Well, but not only that, but it's so weird much. how he's had to keep quiet and act bizarre, yeah. like that. That's strange. Like this dude, he feels like he's like it feels like we said he was going for testing on things, and he exactly doesn't like he want was to waiting say. to have news before he reported anything, right? But but you look at the level of. Uh, talent today and things that you know it's like it just it is surprising and then i love the photo you chose of braun because it just so accurately <laughs> yeah you know That's epitomizes and, and perfectly describes his career in wwe sadly that's uh, hard yeah. and he i mean he looks fantastic now with all the weight he lost and the tone that he well, you know, well jake do you know what he's doing now muscle. you know what i'm doing with braun if i'm AEW, what's that we found ourselves the new leader of the dark order Braun Strowman. <laughs> now, I was going to go with Alistair Black with my Mark comments because Black. I is, know I, I was going to get gonna there, but I was going to say everybody go to AW, <laughs> but it works. No, but Braun. Can you imagine now Alistair Black? Talking. Think about it. I'm dead serious. You're running out there with as a goof. No, they. No, I'm dead serious. No, I'm kidding. But no, I mean, dude, no, they need AW. The Dark Order is lost without Brody Lee. Yeah, they have nothing. So. They go ahead and they have Tommy N come in and say that he was personally chosen by Brody Lee. Right. And I, I don't I don't want to sound like No, he's in contact with him. He should he should pretend he's in contact with him, like beyond the grave. I'm serious. Hey, you know, or, or even even easier if you don't want to get people to be upset about Brody, then just have because they do stuff with his son every now and again, have negative one be like, have the dark order say uh uh you know negative one why aren't you leading us like you said and he's like i can't do that my mom will ground me or i've got school some stupid shit and he appoints he's like i've got someone in mind and have you know brody jr appoint alistair black as the you know tommy end is the new leader of the dark order that would be great that works oh and dude. now brody's son is the one to make the choice i don't think anybody would argue against that and I mean, that's what you're going to get now is everyone talking about where where do people go? Oh well, my god! The 90 day no compete ends right as all in. Oh my god! Oh, wow. Really? Oh, wow. It's a whole new game, Don Cachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. This means that WWE are going on a fire sale to boost their profit margin for when they are ready to sell. Well, Seems that rumors are all but confirmed yep. now. It is weird. I don't know if it's that's... It's very weird. It looks like they're cleaning house, Joe. I mean, they've done this before, I th- yeah, right? Yeah, but now they're really tidying up. They got, they're got they consolidating departments. You know, They're turning graphics departments into one instead of having two or three. Mm. They're changing their script writing. They're changing... You know, all these different departments in the back, they change, not just the talent. So they've, they've fired a lot of people in the past couple of weeks since after WrestleMania. Not to mention a, a lot pointing... of which is people in the back that you know, make the vignettes and the, the editing and uh, the website and the network, I guess, division was completely gutted. So this would make sense in a way. Here's the problem. Here's the contradictions and what makes sense. Number one, there the claim is that Nick Khan is there to help WWE position themselves for sale. That's the claim. Yes, that's the claim. But why well, he's is done Vince... that so far? He got them sold to different networks, and he made them a billion dollars between you know Fox and or, the Saudi deal. Now, and he was instrumental in the Fox deal. It could just be that they're trying to bring in a major business partner too. That could be it too. It may not be that they're selling the company outright. They may just want a partner, like forty percent of the company now owned by Fox or Disney or somebody. That's possible that it's they're selling to a partner, a major partner. So that would put someone major on the table besides Vince, uh, Triple H, and Stephanie. You know, it would put somebody on the table who's from the outside, and 
they may feel they need that capital. Now, the other thing about that is now you think, well, this explains why Vince is just dead and why he does nothing on Monday Night Raw is a garbage show and why he doesn't seem to care at all. But then you hear these reports that Vince is flaming mad. So it's, you know, if he really didn't care, he wouldn't be mad at Raw this Monday. Or maybe he's mad because it looks bad for the people they're trying to sell. I don't know. I'm not sure, but it seems like they've yeah, played it could safe be this, zone. This hurts his, because yeah, they got a 1.62 for the ratings this week. Last week or this week? This week. Wasn't last week also 1.6? Last week was a 1.82, I believe, if I remember correctly. Really? Okay. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just thinking this week. I know. Maybe. No, no. Last week was 1.62. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. So Monday yeah, hasn't come out. Right. So are we waiting for Monday's ratings right now? I think I thought... I'm waiting. I think these are all just old ratings. I'm looking for current. So let me see if I have. I thought that was. So current, I'm waiting but... for today. I'm waiting for this Monday's ra- ratings. I've been yeah, waiting. I don't think we have update yet. All right. Because but... I've been waiting for days. I've been I, like, yeah. I can't wait till those come out. So I thought you had them. I was like, oh my God, they're out. No, that, stupid. that tweet I just looked at, that was from last week. They thought it was this week's. But if I get those ratings, dude, I'm going to freak out because. Well, that's what I'm. I'm deathly curious of. Because I'm I wicked curious. I think Miz killed the show. I, I I think the Miz segment is going to be eye opening. I think that yeah, because I, the, it would be so, you know people would tune off from there and not return. I bet you they're going to have a huge drop and then it just doesn't pick back up. You see Braun Strowman moving around like an idiot right there. <laughs> He's gone, baby. Finally. Lana, I mean, man, I went on a rant about she's going to kill somebody. Remember that? I hope she kills yes. someone in the ring. I hope she so kills someone in the ring, and then two days later, she's fired. <laughs> you know, possibly we'll see her in AEW just because of her husband oh, being yeah. there. She should so that's definitely kind of be. A given. She's got to be with him. I mean, he doesn't need her now because he's actually doing well. But exactly, but that's the thing. He finally is is working out and. I, the person I really feel bad for is Ruby Riot. Ruby and Riot. Morgan. And yeah, uh, Alistair Ruby Black. Ruby goes ahead and gets nothing out of it. I mean, Alistair Black is a given, but Ruby especially. Why is wow. Ruby gone? I mean, she's done nothing but great stuff on there. Especially for someone with a face, uh, you know, you know that you would think Vince would be like, she doesn't look hot enough. By the way, I think she's like weird, like way hot in like a different looking yeah, way. Yeah, she's, she's got that unique... Uh goth look and she's extremely attractive and but she's always been never stellar but but consistent and we've said that and now you did everything with Liv Morgan where you turned her into Emelina and all that crap and it didn't work and they, they brought her back into the riot squad after they got rid of Sarah so it wasn't really the riot squad and then they just floundered they never really won or did much and now we thought we were going to see her and Natalia and Tamina have this feud with the, with the riot squad right that wasn't the case it all just went to shit yeah man I, I I this is crazy breaking news we've got more coming out too I, like there's apparently several other things that are going on um I don't know if they're major people are saying that I don't know if I don't we, think we I, don't I don't know. believe yeah, that we, I don't believe that we keep hearing that it's it's going to be massive names but I mean, what is massive? Every star is massive, essentially. So it, it's. I'd love to no, put that parrot nose in my anus. I'll tell you. Right? Sorry. Just beak first, but. Let me tell you. Who else was there? Santana <laughs> Garrett, Buddy Murphy, Ruby Riot, Alistair Black, Lana, and Brian. They don't Stone even deserve Santara, Santana Garrett. So don't, you know yeah. what I mean? With her, I was like, good, get out of there because you're too good for them. So that was hilarious. Give me the other, give me the other names again. So Braun Strowman, Alistair Black, Ruby Riot, Lana, Santana Garrett, and Buddy Murphy. Wow. And Santana Garrett was just in the news recently, I believe. Uh, yeah. I thought. That was for something. I forget what it was, though. Uh, people were kind of upset with her because they said they had plans for her backstage and things were going to go well. And then it just, oh, she, she let out a controversial political post oh so i wonder if this led to her firing as well could have she said that she did not claim this video and the and was phone free all day so i i don't know what it was but uh she said my girlfriend sent me these videos and photos i was phone free all day i don't post my political views just trying to say uh, share silver glen with everyone so apparently she was out on a lake or river or whatever and on a boat cruising around, having a good day, and somebody in the distance had some type of either anti-Trump or pro... It said, fuck Biden. That's what it said. So there was a flag that said, fuck Biden, and people thought she was zooming in on that. Oh, my God. There was a, there was a couple of flags. One said, blue lives matter, and then there was another one of two fuck Biden flags. So she said that, no, it was just my friend filming 
you know, the, the, the water in the area, it wasn't anything political. So they were oh just showing God. the scenery. This country is retarded. But I wonder if this led to getting her in trouble. Jesus. I mean, you, I mean you're you, going to you, get in trouble nowadays and canceled because you have to be prepared that there might be something in the background of your photos or you know, that you could be blamed for. I imagine you get fired because somebody else has a Trump flag. Why would you get fired for that anyway? But, but like, I mean, dude, this world is, oh, my God. No, we, can't, we cannot get into the politics or I'll lose my mind. Um, I'll start oh, going off into a blaze of insanity. By the way, thanks for subbing, Johnny. Uh, welcome to the channel, man. Live all the time. Shit bomb. Always live wrestling news. This all smells of a buyout by Nick Khan and his cleaning house or prepping for the highest bidder. Hope we see Black Murphy Ruby on weekly TV again soon. Colonel Stutters, thank you for the five dollars and becoming a five dollar shit bomb. It does. It does. You know, you can say it is like their cleaning house and prepping for a sale or something. There's no doubt about it. But they've also released people like this before, so I can't say either way. But they also could be prepping for a buyer, even just a buyer to come in. Uh, it could be there could be several different things that are going on. We've never seen anything like that with WWE though. But it, you know, that is a rumor, and that same rumor coming from the same people that said there were going to be releases today. So that's interesting that the selling the selling rumor comes from the same people. Yoshi D, what up, Yoshi D? Thank you for subbing to the channel, Yoshi. What's going on? Um, no, Bobby Lashley's not released. He's the champion. Um, they may never release uh, Bobby Lashley at this point because he's, he's, you know what I mean? They may only release White. The mismanagement of these released talents these last few months is mind-blowing. If you right. were a talent, why would you want to sign with WWE? Well, I, I mean, because the potential of, number one, you get to work for the company, you probably want to work for your whole life. Number two, the potential to become the top guy and the money. I mean, you, all, all those things. You're on TV. I mean, if you just get to work, even if even if they misuse you and you suck, right? As long as you're in the WWE for a couple of years on TV or whatever it is, you get mainstream notoriety to where you can be hired by another company easily because you have that credibility on your resume. Um, you can be booked at Comic-Con things forever. I mean... There's a lot of reasons why you'd want to work for the WWE. So if you had the choice, you would choose WWE if you could, probably, because you can say, if you're somebody who's been on the indies for five years and WWE decides to acquire you for a training contract or, or whatever you want to call it, I forget the term, but they, they give you eighty, you know, somewhere between $60,000 to $100,000, 50000 to $100,000 for a like some kind of training uh, contract or whatever, you're going to take it because that's more money than you're making now. And if you if you work out with WWE for about a year or two years under that contract and then they decide to hire you into NXT to where you're officially NXT, like my buddy uh, Christian Casanova who debuted the other night, um, and again, his new name escapes me again, um, then they're going to raise your salary to 80000 probably, 80000 to $120,000 or so. Uh, so now you've got a raise. Now you're making still more money than you've ever made in your life, and you're on NXT eventually. And so after that, if you get released, who cares? You made, you made a living, a, a really good wage for a wrestler than most any other wrestler makes. And if they ever call you up to the main roster... Now you're on now you're on mainstream TV free advertisement. So you're thinking about it for two reasons. You're thinking about it number one for yes, making money and your career. You're in the ma the biggest company in the world. But number two, you're an independent contractor and you're basically getting to say, "Look at me. Look at what I can do to the whole entire world." And if WWE mismanages you for 1 year, 2 years, 3 years or 4 years or whatever it is, it doesn't matter because you are still going to now make money because people in AEW, people in other companies are going to recognize you. They're going to feel bad for you. They're going to be like, man, that guy has so much potential. We can do so much with him, and he's there. there that when exactly. When your contract comes up then, they can say, like, oh, they can offer you money, and you can decide to leave or not, or WWE is going to pay you more money. So then you don't have to go. So there's no, there's really not a lot of downside to working for WWE. That's the, that's the reason why people... You're like, why would they go to WWE? Well, that's the reason why they'd go, because it's nothing but a win-win situation. 
But I do think if you don't go to WWE and it's still under Vince or his his continued, you know, number one guys like Laurinaitis, uh, Bruce Pritchard, Khan now is is included in there as well. Right. If you go and you don't go to WWE at first, you know, there is certain people that had a chance to go to both and then chose AEW instead. They'll never probably be hired by WWE while it's still under management of such because they're spiteful, petty. And I, I just can't see like I could see WWE's talent going to AEW. We have. It keeps happening. But I can't see AEW's talent being procured by WWE the same way. You want them to procure them? To Sorry. establish, yeah, I, I really, I, I couldn't fathom that happening. Could you? Could you see, like, even MJF at this point, out of spite, I don't think they'd take. Um, I, I don't. He's a hell of a talent. I, I, I really think that they're that. You don't think they would take AEW people back in WWE? Not at this current point in time. I think they want to kind of set a tone, just out of principle, to be like, if you go there and not with us, then you're, you're dead to us. That's I interesting. Think that's kind of the. That's interesting, Mindset. as opposing to you would think they would try to bid out, like they find out MJF's contract's up, or they, or they, all they have to do is hit up MJF now and say, hey man, man, you've been really good, dude. We've watched what you've been doing, and whenever your contract thing is up or you want to talk, please reach out to me. And they, they hand him a, uh, you know, a card. Yeah, you know, and I, I know that's essentially illegal, you can't. No, you can do that. Their... You can nope. Uh, I I heard you can talk. You, you can you can I, say well, what's up. What's up? Let us know if you want to talk. You when can, you're... Yeah, I don't think you can offer an actual exactly contract. Heard... But yeah, you can you can say you're interested. By the way, W Ryback is trolling everyone again because he's a loser. Uh, WWE Ryback is what he writes, which I swear to God that can get him sued. I I don't know why he tries to be controversial like this i know it's all for attention but my god you just look more and more pathetic as time goes on ryback stop it like my my i'm so nervous guys my bags are packed like did you see the fucking tweet like on the AEW? i'm so nervous uh yeah and then he posts pictures of his gear repeatedly and did I mean, you see that a, uh, oj Sim i had oj simpson call the sex line last night with ryback <laughs> i heard they both called the sex line last night we'll play the clip later um, but right now, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think? you got donations coming in. We're going to play them in just a second here. Lots of people want to talk about what's going on here. Braun Strowman released. He was a piece of garbage anyway. So, I mean, pretty much all these people were garbage. WWE treated them like garbage. The only one that I, I feel like... Number, all right, the only one that I feel like wasn't really treated like garbage but also performed well was Ruby. Like, why in the world is she gone? Because she at least did well, what... They did Really, not do much with them. No, they, I mean, they, they, yeah, but I mean, for the whole year the Riot Squad was originally together, they never won until the very end. And then they were split up and they were ruined by that. And then they did nothing with her with a silly little live breakup angle. Then they put them back together and that was it. So I, I know that none of these people were handled right. You know, Ruby wasn't either, but of all the people, she at least got the you know, some of the nod of like, you know, we'll kind of do something. You know, she got featured in matches, put in positions, you know, but she did lose a lot. I don't know. They didn't treat any of these people right, but I'm shocked about Ruby. I felt like even if they didn't love Ruby or handle her right, I feel like they at least were like, well, we can use her all the time. So this is great. You know, but yeah, I'm, so exactly. I, I am shocked that they got rid of Ruby Riot. Let's see what you guys are saying in the I donation. I mean, you want to hear from the Duncan audience? Chino? You can call me as well. I'll be right back. All righty. What's my name? You got Duncan it. Chino. It's a whole new game. Duncan Chino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say, Say hello, hello to my, my chocolate, chocolate blend. This tells me that WWE is not afraid of AU anymore. Their ratings are so low that says it all. Um, You know, it could be. It could be. Um... Mr. Bonilla, what's up, man? How you doing? Bonilla. Excel Bonilla. That's a great name. What a damn name that is. I, unbelievable. Thank you, sir, for dropping $5 to me and my stupid show, uh, for giving me all that um, support. And thank you guys last night for giving me big-time support, too. We are hanging out doing a gaming stream. You guys forced me to call the sex line. It was insanely fucking weird. Um, we had a great time. And here, oh, here he is now. You want to make fun of me? Fucking finish it. Finish my dick. Weird how they released Riot but kept live.
Other than Bobby and Drew you got AJ and Orton in tag stories and that's it. You gonna turn Seamus or AJ face to face Lashley? Now you lose Brian too. People are gonna be so disappointed going back to Raw Live. I gotta be honest, this is weird. Uh, Deftones, I mean, are they gonna have some major call-ups? Because right now, the one the one concern is that like, there's barely enough stuff going on in WWE, especially on Raw week to week. It's the same matches every week. Same match, same scene, same thing. Do it again, do it again, do it again. And they just do the same things over and over again on Raw all the time. By the way, I am live after every single WWE Raw. And I have been live after every single Raw since 2012. All right? Go back and look. This channel is the longest live streaming post-Raw review show still going today. It's almost unbelievable. I know that Midget left it out of his uh, tweet the other day because he's scared of me, but um, I am the longest uh, live reaction review show to Raw ever. Isn't that crazy? Think about that. Ever. No one else. Joe Cronin Show. So if you don't subscribe, you're missing out on the original, all right, right here. And Jake DeMarco is the original, uh, my original uh, lover, by the way. Uh, Braun Strowman released, Ruby Riot released, Aleister Black released, Lana released. Breaking news, we got more potentially to come. I don't know if I believe that, but that is the rumor that more is to come, which is crazy to me. Um, I don't know what the logic is behind that about like releasing press releasings. Uh, for, uh, you know, another one? Why not just have one big one? I'm not sure. But uh, the rumor is any minute or any day or whatever. I, I would assume that it would all happen before SmackDown on Friday night, but maybe not. And we're waiting to hear about another release that's internal in WWE corporate. That could be a tipper offer. Somebody else has been released in the company, not a major person, but a, but a pretty critical area in the corporate area I guess I don't know what that is like the art department or something like that but if it's the art department then like whatever right it's like I don't know what that means but if it's somebody else like in in charge of something certain that hits a key point well then you know that's interesting so depending on who it is we're gonna find out first person that breaks five bucks will become the top dog right now it's uh I think Colonel Starters is at five we'll see what happens but Alistair Black released Braun Strowman released um we are here with you guys live, and we are taking phone calls. Jake will be right back. My buddy Jake DeMarco is here live with us. You guys are here with us, too, and I want to hear what you guys are saying. Some people can't donate, and because of that, we're going to take your calls as well if we can. Probably won't get too many in, but we'll get as many as we can in. 339-226-6610 is the number. In case you don't know the number, that is the number. Uh, I'll put it up on the screen for you guys that don't know it, um, that are new to the channel. Uh, or just don't remember it because it's who who remembers someone's uh, Skype phone number uh, at this point. So Skype is open. Phone lines are open. 339-226-6610. What are your thoughts on this situation? Where should these guys go? Who else should be fired? How pissed off are you and why? Are you happy? I mean, you should be happy because most of us have just complained about these people uh, for a while. So it's like, dude, we've complained about them for so long. Of course they would let them go. I think this is all good news. Good. Lana almost killed someone in the ring every time she's in there. She's fucking terrible. So get rid of Lana. That makes perfect sense to me. And, uh, you know, Braun Strowman's an idiot moron. They've treated him like a moron for the last four years. So it's not even believable. Every time he does something, it's just annoying because you don't believe it's possible that he can do it because they've treated him like a goddamn moron for the last uh, however long it's been. And now we go to the Skype line. Uh, lots of Skype calls coming in. I'm sorry, uh, 781, I hung up on you. And also uh, 718, or whatever Brooklyn number that was, I hung up on you too. But uh, it's probably because Kyrie Irving's a butthead. Uh, Skype, go ahead. Uh, it's 240. What's up? Hey, man, this is Ryan Hill. What's going on? What's up, Ryan? What's going on, bro? Man, all right, I just woke up to this shit. And this is so crazy that, okay, Braun Strowman, kind of was surprised a little bit, but Ruby Riot, Aleister Black, like, come on, bro. What's going on with WWE, man? Well, they, they were, they're devoid of creativity, obviously, because the fact that they couldn't use these people is, is beyond, is, uh, is mind boggling to me. Yeah. Definitely. And dude, what do you think about Aleister Black going to the dark order? I think he could lead the dark order in AEW. 
Oh, I would love that. I would love to see that. That'd be so cool, man. Hundred percent, bro. I think that's what it, I think that's what they do. Hey, thanks for the call, dude. That guy sounds like he's he did just wake up or he's high. Either way, that's awesome. I love him. Uh, great caller. I know that guy uh, very well. He always calls. I don't know your name, man. We got to get your name eventually. You've been calling for three, four years or something like that. And he's always a great call. Ruby Rye is one that I was kind of upset about just because I thought, man, she really did everything you asked her to do. You know, I mean, she did everything. Been there a little bit. I'm shocked about her, to be honest. Like more than anybody else. Uh eight oh four, what's going on? Dude, what is going on with them releasing Ruby Riot? I know, right? She got that nose that makes me make me go wild. <laughs> Dude, I was just thinking about this. Like, I know that AEW is doing all in in August and they're doing a women battle royale. Like that could be the place where she could show up. Yeah, because that's the 90-day compete clause for all of them. I think Jake was just telling us that that falls on the right date or whatever. I haven't done the math, but it looks like they could show up for that. I don't know how to feel, honestly, about Aleister Black and the Dark Order, though. I know, like, I feel like AEW has a pretty stacked roster, honestly. But, like, I think they're after Daniel Bryan. No, I think they should be after Daniel Bryan, but I think as far as the Dark Order goes, I think that needs to be disbanded unless you have a real leader again because it sticks out that Brody Lee was really good. Like he really was and he, we thought he was good then, but he really stands out now when you don't when you see there's nobody that you can plug in there to fill that role at all. It's like when a when a someone dies on a TV show and they try to keep it going. It's like um, yeah. it's like Roseanne. They got rid of Roseanne because all the SJW stuff. Well, that show went to shit. It's like when John Ritter died on that show he was on, and there's a million other examples. But yeah, there's just no one to fill in, and it doesn't feel right. But you're right. I mean, they should go after Daniel Bryan. But I, I still have a feeling Bryan's going to show up on Raw. I still think Bryan's going to show up yeah. on Raw, and it's it's a big or or. Yeah, or NXT or something like that. Yeah, that's a great point, NXT. And and I think w, it's WWE creating their own hype to be like, oh, my God, Brian is here, and it, it's a huge news thing, and then people will tune in. I think it's a, a brilliant idea by them. I don't think he's – but, yeah, AEW should – I don't know. I wonder how much he'll draw. You know, I wonder how much Daniel Bryan will draw. I mean, almost nobody will draw now, so it almost doesn't matter, but – how much will Daniel Bryan draw? Like, if he goes to AEW and the ratings every week over there are eight hundred thousand, or nine hundred thousand, or one million, you know, are they are they going to go up? How much? You know, and how long will they stay up? So, I don't know what that answer is. I don't know if that's fifty thousand. If it's if it's less, if it's if it's over a hundred thousand people watch because of Daniel Bryan, I think that's a win. But any below a hundred thousand. I don't think that's worth it. And I don't know what the numbers or projections of that are. Do you, do you see, uh, do you see, I see, I see Lana going to AEW. I think that's predictable. Oh yeah. Because yeah, Rusev's there or Miro's there and Aleister Black significant other is there. So, I mean, these guys, <laughs> I would think they're all going over there. Um, Last but not least, Joe, uh, love the show, but um, do you think WWE is setting themselves up for the company to be bought by a different uh, company? There's a lot of evidence there for it. I don't, I've never, I don't think I remember a time this evidence was here. I, we've heard WWE to sell, WWE could sell, blah, 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 but there's never been enough evidence to back that up. There is right now. It still doesn't mean they're selling. doesn't mean they're selling. I still think that it could mean... It could also mean that they're looking for a buyer. It doesn't mean they're looking to sell the company. It could mean that they're looking for a major buyer. They're looking for like Fox or Disney or somebody like that to buy forty uh, percent of the company, uh, or to, to or, or or just you know something like that. They're looking for a major player to jump in and be a part of the company. That could be what's going on, or they could be outright trying to sell the company. That's true, but I think it's more. I don't know. I feel like it's more likely that they're looking for a a business partner of some kind, whether that's 20 percent of the company or 40 percent of the company or whatever. You know, I, I just feel like they're looking for a business partner and more likely. But something is going on. And Nick Khan is in charge of it all and is the one who's being positioned and giving this car blanche in the office to do several things and to overhaul and overview everything. And that makes you wonder, why would you do that? Why would all these be uh, departments be compartmentalized in the way they are and moved around? 
it all could be coincidence, but either way, Nick Khan is making huge changes to the company, and a lot of it is about revenue. So I don't know. I would say, like, I I I sixty percent believe somebody is coming in to be a partner with them, and then I forty percent believe it's to sell the company. And then I guess there is an option that none of that's happening too. But that's I feel like that's less likely. I feel like something's going on. Did you? Uh, uh, sorry, I know I said that was the last question, but um, did you happen to see what Tony Khan said about Nick Khan over yeah. the weekend before Double or Nothing? Yeah, I thought that I thought was funny. That was epic. I, I thought, thought it was, was funny. Some people thought it was cringe, but I thought it was great because it made headlines. That's all. It, that's all I care is that he made headlines and it was kind of interesting. Hell, I made a video about it and it got ten thousand views or something. And, and so you know what? When I when I put out wrestling news, a lot of times now it gets one thousand, two thousand, three thousand clicks. That got over 10,000 clicks, so I don't know, man. I, and I thought it was kind of funny. I, I like how Tony is, you know, Tony's really kind of nerdy and awkward sometimes, but he's getting better at being on camera, and I, I think it was funny. I liked it, too. In the end, I give it a thumbs up, I guess. All right, All right Thanks, Joe. Have a great day, man. Good call, bro. Uh, appreciate it. Great call. Good caller. Like you. Um, yeah, but I, I understand why people said Tony Khan was cringe, though. I, I get that. I get why you would say it was cringy. I get it. I mean, but a lot of stuff I do is cringy. So you know, who, what am I to do? I mean, the guy, the guy got news. You know, the guy got the wrestling world buzzing right before a pay per view for them. I mean, how much more can you ask for? The Google Trends. Go look at the Google Trends at that time. Tony Khan and his brother. The searching for that was like started blowing up. It was crazy. So, I mean, hey, Tony Khan, what a good idea. At least Lana will be back with Miro. Miro probably wanted her to be fired just so he can see her again. What was the point of the Alistair Black segments we were getting? Those were a waste of time. WWE is pretty much giving their stars to AU. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think... I mean, here's the other thing, uh, Picharo. Picharo, what's going on, brother? I love you, buddy. The other thing about this, though, is I don't think everybody needs to go to AEW. I don't think everyone just, oh, they've got to go to AEW. Everybody has to just jump ship to AEW now. Go to AEW. You know, I don't think that that needs to happen. I, I don't even like the idea of that. I mean, and he, the other funny thing is how you, people hate these people, superstars, sometimes. People aren't happy with Lana. People aren't happy with this one, that one, the other one. And then they're like, oh, yeah, AEW, they're going to be great. You know, it's like they may not be. They may just, maybe this person isn't that good. You ever think about that? You think Lana's going to be good in AEW? I don't think so. I think she'd be good as a valet for Miro. Lana is a is a top-tier manager. When she was with Rusev, Lana was one of the best managers of the last 10 years when she was with Miro. So Lana, in my opinion, is about a 7 or 8 out of 10 valet or manager for Miro or for Rusev. But in the ring, as a wrestler and as a personality in wrestling, she's like a 2 out of 10. So why would you put someone in that position to fail? It never made any sense to me. WWE never made sense at all. If you have Lana, you put her with a wrestler and make her a manager. Because as a manager, she's going to make the talent better. And she's, at her, she's reaching her best potential. I don't understand the idea of putting someone who is shitty in the ring in the ring when they have a, a nine or eight out of ten potential as a as a manager. Makes no sense. It's just it's just like Byron Saxton. Why is Byron Saxton a commentator? He's not that good at it. He's annoying. I wanna fucking wring his throat almost. But Byron Saxon? As an as a backstage co commentator and interviewer, Byron Saxon is money backstage. Hey, it's Byron Saxon. We're backstage with blah blah blah. He just ha I don't know what it is, but he's got it in the backstage. Byron Saxon outside the ring interviews, great. I mean, he's not mean Gene Okerlund, and he's not some of those guys, but he really was great. But it doesn't matter anymore now because every single WWE interview goes the same way now anyhow. So it doesn't matter. Every WWE interview is, it's certainly been a crazy night tonight on Raw. And now, please welcome my guest at this time, Braun Strowman. Braun, 
in your match tonight, you blah, blah, blah. They all do that, every single one, so it doesn't matter. We don't need Byron Saxon because his individuality that was good about five to six, seven years ago in the backstage interview area is out the window because every single backstage interviewer now has the same script and the same lines and does the same thing, so it doesn't matter. So Byron Saxon, I guess you can sit out at the announcer's booth where we also tell you to do the same thing the same way as everybody else and their mother. So terrible the WWE is right now. And it's been this way for years. And every year I tell you how to fix it. And every year they don't fix it. Every year. Go back. You want to see it? Anybody working at WWE watching? Go back. 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Can you believe I've been doing that? This I've been doing this this long? Can you believe that? Can you believe my show started because of these complaints? We're going to take your phone calls in a minute. 339-226-6610. Donations are coming in. We're talking to everybody. I'll talk to everybody. I'll talk to your mothers at this point. Uh, Because the prophecies come true year in and year out, every single year. I tell you what the ratings are going to go down to, and they go down to that. I'm sorry. I don't know what they think they're doing. Like, it's like, it's literally, they want the company to be run into the ground. Would you want to do that before selling a company? But listen, the profits are high. The profits are huge. The profits are up. So if the T rate, TV ratings are down, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We, I mean, unless the buyer goes, what about your TV ratings? That's the only thing I can think is if the buyer went, yeah, I'd buy the company, but uh, the TV ratings are really bad. Maybe if you could get those back up to $3 million, I'd think there was something going on. I don't want to buy right now. I'm paying a lot of money, a lot of money for this. Um, you made all the profit already. I now have to make the profit in the future. I mean, maybe, I don't know. I don't know how that shit works. I know WWE knows how it works damn well. WWE is phenomenal at making money. And we all know that the only time Vince ever gives a crap about anything is when they came to take the water coolers in 1996. So that being said, let's go to your donations and the phones are ringing. Micah for money in the bank. Riker for money in the bank. You think so? Well, they might release him next because he's another he's another right wing guy, Trump guy. So he could be the next to go if that's what they're really releasing people for. Spaz Phoenix podcast. Thanks for the three dollars. I'm drinking ginger ale and fucking coffee. I'm ready to go. Lots of stuff going on right now. Let's hear another one. Oh, Anthony Torres, man. I'll get you on in one second. Hang on, Anthony. I'll get you on in a second, Anthony. I see you coming in here. Hang on a minute, Anthony. I'll get you. And Jake, if you're coming back, brother, just jump on the on hold section. We get Jake DeMarco in the house. He was here. Uh, He's coming back in a minute, I believe. Also, we got lots of calls. The phone lines are lit up. People want to be heard. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's more news coming out. We'll talk about that. Uh, And it's it's going. It's it's a wild morning. Shit bomb. You become a shit bomb. What up, Deftones? Release Nia Jax. Riot gone cuz they got Ripley. Rhea Ripley. Yeah, they were like, well, we've already got a goth looking crazy person. All right, get rid of Rhea Ripley. That's a good point. Or get rid of a. Uh, that's a great point. That's why they got rid of Ruby Riot. You could be right in a way, maybe. That could be right. Deftones, thank you. Yeah, they'll never. I don't know if they'll ever get rid of Nia because of The Rock. You know, because Nia is. And she's unique looking. Oh, my God. Hey, what's up, Bill Mitchell? Bill Mitchell out of nowhere with a $10 donation. He didn't even say anything. He just wanted to drop $10. Well, he is now the top dog. Bill Mitchell, thank you so much for supporting the show like that, bro. What's up? Bill Mitchell, I hope today all your fantasies come true, even the one about the dog. Um, But, yeah, we have lots of releases by WWE. Phone lines are jammed. We're going to take phone calls. The donos are rolling in. People are wild. And uh, I don't know, man. This is There's some more stuff coming out I'll read in a minute. Um, not sure who I took here. It's, uh, it's 231. What's up? It's Chad. What's up, Chad? Chad LeFave or Chad someone else? LeFave. Oh, what's up, dude? just woke up and I seen you were on and then the first thing I see is Aleister Black. Really? Could you guys have fucked me? Could WWE have fucked up such a give me than that man? I don't understand how they screwed him up. 
Yeah, it's a you know Braun Strowman. He's a he's a running retard basically. Ruby <laughs> Riot was nothing after freaking the Riot Squad and Lana. Do we even need to go on that? Yeah, but it was a layup. Alistair Black was a fucking layup. Exactly, I agree. If they fucked him up, they're they're fully stupid. He had the great entrance. The per he, it's and that's the funny thing is it was all set up already too. They didn't even need to do anything. Here's the perfect entrance music. Here's the entrance. Here's the fucking gimmick. Here's what he can do. And now, now expand upon that, Vince. You can expand upon it all day and do all kinds of stuff. Nothing. Nothing was done. I, I literally wasn't a big NXT guy. I'd watch it just for something to watch. And I, I, would, I turned it on. And I, I don't even remember what the hell I was doing. And I heard that music. I just looked over. And all of a sudden, the riser comes up like this. And I'm going, what the fuck is this shit? And... Hooked me, and I haven't been hooked on any new gimmick or anything in ever. And I'm there going, this is me. I am so into this. Right, and when he did, even when he debuted on Raw or whatever on the main roster, it, I thought it was going over pretty well. Him and Ricochet went over pretty well with people. Like it, it was really going well for for a lot of the mainstream audience to not really know who they are. A lot of the mainstream people fell into line and thought these guys are pretty cool, and. They just literally, Vince just destroyed them over two years, just ruined them. Yeah, there's another one I feel for. Rick, why is Ricochet, he's somewhere going, why, where's my Where's my let go? I want to go, please. No, he doesn't want to go. He signed a contract. Oh, yeah, moron. <laughs> I mean, they gave him a fucking, yeah, they gave him like, uh, I don't remember what the number is. It's somewhere here. I don't know. I think he got $3 million. $3 million for two years or something like that? I don't know, but either way, like, you know, I mean, sign me up. You, you know, if... It, well, it, yeah, okay, yeah, $3 million for two years, eat some catering, and then you can still have, you're still young, you know, where he can go somewhere else. Right. Maybe Japan or... Yeah, I mean, you would do it because... You would do it because you'd be like, oh, shit, I get millions of dollars for two, three years, and at the end of that, I can go wherever I want, and I'm pretty much set for life if you if you keep your money the right way, you know. I mean, there's no reason why. And, and AEW probably offered him a hundred fifty thousand to two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, that's that's just insane. And the AEW can't. Yeah, the they, only they could match they could match WWE, but I if they wanted to, yes, they could. But then they'd yeah, be they'd be doing that with everybody, though. They'd be doing it with everybody, so they don't want to do that, right? Um, but exactly. I, I agree. You don't, become, you don't become a multi-billionaire and all that by just throwing money around. Right. Like, if, if Ricochet became the top guy ever, like, people just... Like, if even if Ricochet was in a situation like Rusev, where people were like, Ricochet Day, we love Ricochet, and then Vince was screwing them, well, you know, then... You know, AEW might say, wow, this guy's connecting with fans a lot. This guy might be worth it. But right now, it's like it's not. It would enhance your show, and he'll enhance your show, and it'll make your show better. Yeah, but it's like the guy. It's not worth competing for millions of dollars. Yeah, I see that point. Exactly. And it's not the and, and and allegedly, like I've been saying this whole show, allegedly it's not the end of the releases today. Oh, cool. Insane, Vince's. Vince has got dementia, Alzheimer's, or something, because he's just, okay. he's off his fucking rocker. Uh, I mean, I don't know what's going on with Vince. Who knows? And if they're selling the company, it would explain why he's crazy. Or if they're just trying to get a buy. I think they're trying to get a buyer or a business partner in. That's what I think. I think they're trying to, I think somebody's going to jump on ship with them, potentially. I, I, that's what I think. I don't think it's that they're selling it outright, but they are. They're selling talent right now. It's a fucking fire sale, it looks like. Oh, yeah, it's a fire sale, definitely. But, I mean, I don't know what anybody's going to do as far as, you know, picking up the talent. There, there's not enough uh, There's not enough room, you know, at other companies, you know, for the, all these people. So when these 20 people drop, I mean, you know, I don't know who they're going to be able to – I don't know who's going to sign them because they're not going to be able to go everywhere. There's not I, – but maybe they will because, I mean, they'll take the contract, right? If you get released by WWE and you, and you used to make millions of dollars – or you used to make four hundred thousand dollars. Well, I mean, if if AEW could easily offer contracts for eighty thousand to a hundred thousand, I mean, you're going to say yes because where else are you going to go? So, 
they they could pick up a lot of these people because they they won't have to offer huge contracts because WWE just released them. So they don't have right, to compete. Then they, got, then they got the new tier, the new show coming on, even though it's only an hour. So, but they got you know that avenue to go down too. So, right. And I know that Braun Strowman is pretty much broken in WWE. I, I don't know. He's still a massive man and all these other things. But I, I think you got to sign Alistair Black if you're AEW. I mean, I would think that's a one hundred percent. Oh, then yeah, that's definite. And you know, give him. You know, he can't go by his name, but. In the independence, he had that his, which I can't remember. Tommy End, me. Tommy End. Yeah, so we'll go back to that and then and use and use that gimmick better, and it's gold. It's fucking gold. Yeah, I mean Tommy End was a pretty well-known guy and name, so I think you'll do well with that, man. And listen, Chad, thank you for calling, bro. Anything else you want to say? No, I just got my bitching done for the day. I'm going to go get ready for work now. All right, man. Sounds good, bro. You have a good day. Thank you, brother. You too. Bye. Bye, bye, man. Uh, phone lines open again. Chad Lefave, longtime guy. Good call. Couple random things. Uh, a lot more going on today, apparently. Uh, so I, I'm keeping my nose on. I got every site and every alert up right now, and I'm looking because I'm waiting. I just DM somebody like, ah, this is weird. I don't know when the next group here are, are going to happen, but you never know. Did you just donate to Joe? Did you just donate to Joel? Thank you for the donation. And because you donated, I'm going to feast myself <laughs> in the bunghole. What's up, Arushin Chew? $25. <laughs> this just in. WWE has come to terms of the release of Jake DeMarco. <laughs> Jake has been released from his commentating job on JCS. He was. He was released. I don't know. He had to leave a few minutes ago. Uh, Roosh and Chu, thanks, man. I don't know why the 25 don't know is. not I don't know what it was. I guess I got to get it back. I didn't realize it, there was no uh, there was no good alert for 25. I don't know why that is. Uh, Roosh and Chu, thank you, Aru. What's been up, man? Uh, he still is the longest, I think the longest Twitch subscriber ever. I don't know what he's on it or if he missed the month. I'm not sure. But thank you, Aru. He is now the top dog of this stream. Thank you to all the releases at WWE so I could get a paycheck today. Uh, Wayne Holt has subscribed to the channel. What's up, Wayne? Thanks for subbing. Good to hear from you. 857, what's going on? Hey, Joe. It's me, Dan Kennedy. Dan Kennedy? Oh, my God. I can be on Monetize This. I can take it. Oh, yeah. I hope your mother dies. Oh. With the smack you've been having on there, I have a pretty good chance I fare pretty well. Hell yeah, man. Well, it's good to hear from you. Last time I saw Dan Kennedy, we were at AEW in Boston together, and everybody saw that on the AEW Boston documentary. Um, you sex beast. I, I had fun with you, man. That was a fun day. I always think back to that day. It was a good day. Everybody. Yeah, it was a good day. I'm curious. Why did they let out for Blanco? Didn't he just start a thing with Diggy? Yes, I'm going to bet that Vince didn't like it. I I'm, I, You know, because I'm betting. Well, here's the other thing. Here's two possibilities. All right, so there's two possibilities. Number one, Vince didn't like it, and he was like, nope, stop that. Or the other thing is that Vince was going to find – they were going to release him anyway, but SmackDown people didn't know that because we heard from Road Dog uh, several times from Road Dog that, you know, hey, we were going to do all these things. They told us we could do them or whatever, and then they just changed our plans by firing someone or moving someone or – I don't know what's going on, Dan, but your phone's cr you just went nuts, and the feedback was insane. I had to hang up on you. I love you, Dan Kennedy. Thank you, Dan. Um, we heard that from uh, Road Dog when he used to run SmackDown. W one of the biggest complaints from Road Dog was when they had Undertaker. I think Undertaker was going to do something with AJ Styles, or Undertaker was going to do something on SmackDown, and they made this big deal about it. And then, and then he showed up. The Undertaker showed up, and then all of a sudden. The Undertaker was doing it on Raw, like, and and he left SmackDown, and then Road Dog was like, "Yeah, it would have been good if they had told us about that." And so that tells me that you know whoever is in charge of SmackDown or running SmackDown, you know, is always at the disadvantage that you know Vince may do something that affects your shit, and you may be in the middle of a story, or you may be telling a story, and it doesn't matter because uh, they decided something else. So that is something that we fully are aware of. 
and could 100% be the reason uh, why that went down. But so far, yes, uh, Lana is gone. Alistair Black is gone. Braun Strowman is gone. Buddy Murphy is gone. And this may not be the end of it. I mean, but these are all people that have been terrible, except for Alistair Black. I mean, but it's all people that they've done bad. Like, uh, Santana Garrett is gone. Um, Alistair Black has commented. He says this is a surprise. Alistair Black says this is a complete surprise. So... Alistair Black just commenting that I am surprised. Like, basically, he had no idea this was coming. Obviously, he was just st starting a a feud on SmackDown. So that tells us all that this was a... I mean, even SmackDown is probably su super surprised. Whoever was booking this shit is surprised that Al they lost Alistair Black. Like, 100%. Crazy. Jonathan Coleman has subscribed to the channel. What's going on, Jonathan? Thanks for subscribing. Uh, we're live after every single Monday Night Raw. I'm live after AEW. And we'll be live this Friday after AEW and SmackDown. It's going to be a big Friday this Friday night. Monetize This is on Saturday nights now. We'll see you Saturday night for Monetize This as well. And we got more to come here. Uh, more news hopefully coming. Mahit. Mohit. Um, Taria, I'm not sure how you say that last name. I might have butchered your name. I'm sorry if I did. Uh, I can't even pronounce Irish names the right way. What's my name? Don Cacino. It's a whole new game. Don Cacino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. Now that Alesta is out, is Zelena out too? Not sure what the hell is going on. Yeah, they were about to bring Zelina Vega in. Um, and then, uh, so... Okay, Hollywood guy, thanks for the $5. So we had heard that they were going to bring Zelina Vega in. They had her down in NXT about to do something. And it was all like 100%. Zelina Vega's coming back to WWE, oh my God. And now we, we heard about a week ago or two weeks ago that Zelina Vega may not be back and that it maybe isn't working out, which is like, well, what? They just brought her in. And now Aleister Black is gone. So, I don't know. I think Alistair Black might have thought, well, listen, my wife's coming back. And I'm in a, a storyline. Here we go. Things are going good. Oh, you're fired. Oh, shit. I'm fired. Okay, wait. What? What's going on? And I don't know what's up with Zelina Vega now. So, that is another interesting thing. There are so many weird things at play here. And we don't really 100% understand what no. is going on with that. 920, what's up? I thought, well, listen, my wife's coming back. Oh, he's listening to the show in the background. I'm going to give him a count of three. Look at Aleister Black in this photo, too, by the way. He looks like, I'm waiting for my wife to get home, and I'm going to eat her. Uh, 920, mm -hmm. what's up? Yes, uh, I was just calling about the releases today. Yeah, man, what do you I think? think Bullshit. Bullshit. What do you? Who are you mad about? Well, I'm mad that you know, like uh, top stars, you know, getting releases and everything like that. You know, people I, that could have you know taken the names, you know, over the top or whatever. But well, then, what do you think about Lana released. though? Like, do you think like I mean, like I'm just mad how they were all managed and handled. So I'm not even mad they're gone because I feel like they were all being used wrong forever anyway. So. You know, I feel like it doesn't matter, but I could see being mad that they were never used the right way, you know? Of course, yeah. Lana, Lana, uh, I was appreciative enough that she did enough to, you know, take her name, you know, to a higher, you know, higher, like, uh, level. She never reached that, but still, like, if people didn't appreciate that, then, you know... They're not wrestling fans. Well, she was so good on the as a manager. I don't understand why you take someone who was great as a manager and then try to make them wrestle when they're bad at that. Like they just used her just the wrong way. She was great on the mic as a manager, but as a wrestler, it was awful. And it was like it just never seemed to make any sense, you know? Yes, 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 yes. But yeah. uh, you know, 
she was still there. You know, she did the whole um, uh, wedding with uh, Bobby Lashley. Uh, mm-hmm. She helped Bobby Lashley, you know, elevate himself. Yeah, she helped him too. Then, you know, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah, he helped him out and everything like that. But and then you know, like, what well, what is it like, uh, like uh, a year or something like that, and then they just kick her out like that. Yeah, I mean, Alistair Black was in the middle of a storyline and thought he was, you know, going to be with the company a while. Um, so he's – thanks for the call, by the way. He's surprised more than anybody. 928, what's up? Hey, Joe. How you doing, man? It's uh, Primitive Lifeways. Oh, shit. What's up, Primitive? How you been? Oh, you know, just staying busy. How about you? Uh, insane. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. The ship's sinking. Um, but, yeah, what's been up? Yeah. Uh, I mean, like – Crazy, crazy news, uh, crazy times. Yeah, yeah, I just I just tuned in for a little bit. I saw um, the releases, and, you know, a lot of people talk about, and I see it all over the place, uh, they talk about how the stars weren't, weren't that great. You know, they didn't, they didn't know how to, how to wrestle, and they, they just weren't that great on TV, but well, it, I think it, I think it comes down to booking. It's it's how you book it. Oh yeah. And if the creative, if the creative aspect isn't booking Braun right, of course they're going to make him look like a fool. Oh, you, you're. It's one hundred percent what you just said is right because you can prove it right now. We can prove it because for for two years Lana worked as a manager perfectly, and when they put her yeah. in the ring as a wrestler, she was garbage. So now you have garbage. Uh, Alistair Black was awesome in NXT. Alistair Black comes up with Ricochet and is awesome still, and then they destroy him over time, and he goes to shit. So now you have shit, so that's number two. Braun Strowman comes in, seems like a badass, and then over the years you make him goofy, stupid, and and choo-choo train, and now he sucks, so you've killed him as well. So they destroyed all three of these people on your screen right now that I have up. So you nailed it. Well, it's it's, just, the, it's booking 100%. It's just too bad because, you know, Braun has talent. Um, all of these people have talent. Yep. It's just how you use that talent. Um, and uh, unfortunately, they just they don't know how to book. They don't know how to use them. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I've talked to other people about this, like uh, Conman 167. And um, same thing. I mean, I think we're all in agreement here. I do have a question for you, though, man, if I got another couple seconds or so. Yeah. Um, so I, I've been working on my channel, especially my, my tags, my video tags. I notice on one of the background slides you have, um, like, flames in the background, and then you have the stars up there. How are you? What program are you using to take those stars and pull them off of the background where you're finding them at and putting them onto your background. Photoshop. I'm just trying to do that with my videos. Photoshop. Oh, Photoshop? Yep. There's also a free uh, program. Okay. You can type in like free Photoshop type of thing, and you can actually do it for free on some websites. It's a little bit goofier, but I just use Photoshop. It's five bucks a month. Oh, cool. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, don't Don't want to take up other people's time and uh, keep up the good work, man. It's yeah, been man. a while. Yeah, appreciate it. Hit me up anytime. We'll talk uh, whenever. Good to hear from you. All right. Take care, Joe. All right. Later, man. All right. Bye. Boom, 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 boom. Also, uh, the other thing is I didn't even, I didn't Photoshop these myself. I actually just grabbed, uh, these were already PNG'd uh, for me. So just look up PNGs on Google and you can just use whatever. Um, What else do we got uh, here? I know, he promoted someone else and then himself. I know, what a dildo. No, he's okay. He's a producer. Meme Life just subscribed. We all love a good meme life, man. Especially we can meme everybody's mothers uh, in the audience. No doubt about it. Um, Guys, we're live after every single Monday Night Raw. We're live almost every day here on the channel. We do tons of non-wrestling shows, too. Also, shout out to everybody who jumped on the Patreon. We're back up to 280 patrons. We're on our way to 300 patrons again. We need to do that. Arif Umar, what's up? Thanks for subbing to the channel, man. What's up? Uh, we got lots of subs coming in. 339-226-6610. Oh, my God. He did that? Holy shit. 
That's fucking funny. But horrible at the same time. I'm going to go back to the phones in a minute. Plus, we're going to have Jake DeMarco back in a second as well. Um, Amina Hassan. What's up? Thanks for, for subbing to the channel, Amina Hassan. We could use uh, all the help we can from over in the Middle East. What's going on? Shout out to everybody in India. A lot of people from Egypt tuning in. Yeah, I see Dana, Egypt Brooke, going Mandy, on. Who are terrible still have a job. And Eva Marie coming back. The women's version is dead. Let's go back to bra panty matches. Yeah, but you know what? Mandy and Dana are better than Lana. You know what I mean? Like, as far as wrestling, they're better than Lana. Dana Brooke is better than Lana in the ring, you know? So that doesn't bother me. You know, Mandy Rose does have stone boots. I don't know why, but Mandy Rose moves like her feet are made of stones. But she's still better in the ring, I think, you know, than Lana. So that doesn't really bother me, Alexis' sweet ass. But, you know, I mean, Lana was the best of everything when she was a, uh, when she was a manager or a valet or whatever you want to call it. Siddharth. Uh, thanks for subbing to the channel again. What's going on? Ruby Riot? I, she's the one that's like, I don't get it. She did everything they wanted. Um, you know, they shit on her, but she did everything she they wanted. She was wrestling in the ring well. Naomi Peters just subscribed. What's up, Naomi Peters? How you doing? Um, that that one kind of... I'm I'm confused by Ruby Riot the, like, the most because they, they were using her, you know, even though to not to her ability fully... But using her. John Cena Repairs, thanks for subbing to the channel. What's going on? Who knows what WWE is doing? We're, we're, now, I'm hearing that there's going to be more releases. We're, we're getting pretty good information, potentially, that there's more coming. And I don't know when that more coming is coming. And Cody Kick, thanks for subbing to the channel. What's going on? We're having a subscription party right now. We're having a freaking subscription party. In the chat, who do you want released next? That's what I want to know. Right now, give me one name. Who's released next? Who do you want gone? That's what I want to know. Mind if I do. What's my name? Dunkachino. It's a whole new game. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. This is crazy. WWE is not in financial trouble. Um, yeah, WWE is not in financial trouble. Of course they're not. They're in creative trouble, as far as we're concerned. As far as you're concerned, the people that watch Raw every single Monday night, do you guys remember when they stood in the ring, when the McMahons and everybody stood in the ring and said, we hear you, we understand? They, they literally just got worse almost from that point on. From that point on, they brought in Ricochet and Aleister Black, and that was good, and then they just trended downward with doing nothing with people. It's kind of unbelie unbelievable. Devil Devil subscribed. I have a song called Devil. It's kind of funny. Uh, Devil Devil, thank you for subbing to the channel, man. Um, we appreciate that. Good to have you here, Mr. El Diablo, or Diablo. Uh, Diablo 3, I'm still playing the video game. Believe SDB, subscribe to the channel. What's up? We're having a subscription party. Everybody sub, and we're going to be live all the time, and you're going to love the channel. You're going to love the channel so much, you're going to cream in your pants. I just lost the caller, 424. You, I lost your call. Call back. We'll get you on the air. 339-226-6610. That's the phone number. You know the deal. A lot of you guys. 484, what's up? Yo, Joe, what's good, man? What's up? It's Moss Blaze, baby. Moss Blaze! What's going on, brother? You want to talk to the devil, Moss Blaze? Tell me, Moss Blaze. Who else should be fired, Moss Blaze? Well, I have a good account by the man upstairs that NXT is going to do some cutting next. Oh, my God. You tell so, me NXT is uh, going to release people. Yeah, it's not just NXT here. NXT UK is apparently letting go like half of their roster. So, oh uh, shit! And that's an inside source, bro. I'm here in Central Florida, so I'm I'm pretty well connected to the wrestling thing. So just just expect more releases. Um, actually, wow. also, um, I've heard that uh, some of the people that got let go today were actually at the end of their contract and they did not want to renew. So that's oh. part of the reason why the let go and got you you, you think maybe like ruby riot was coming up on her contract and since she wasn't going to renew they just added to the list like things like that yeah her lana lana wanted to go for a while now oh so uh so apparently well, that's part of the reason but she did move to tampa to train with 
uh, Natalia and TJ at the new dungeon. Uh huh. So it's kind of surprising because she was really trying hard to get better in the ring. So she actually left Nashville to come to Tampa uh, to train as a wrestler. So she must be pretty bummed. But from what I understand, her contract was coming up too. So that's probably part of the reason Man, that she got let go as well. If I could say one thing to Lana, it would be this. And if she was ever, she's not watching this, but. You are so great on the microphone and as a manager, or as a manager at least. You're a great manager. You're you're so great. Oh, yeah. Don't be a wrestler. Oh, yeah. Stop it. You don't need to be a wrestler. You don't need to do it. Lana, yeah, you don't I mean, need to do it. You're a great manager. Think, that's that's it. Yeah, yeah. And I understand completely because when she was the Russian the ravishing Russian dude in that red tight dress, she was yep. Killing it, man. And and she dude, now it. now it's a bonus that she does know how to at least you know to do some things in the ring. She can take bumps. Yes, yeah, so like she can take a bump as a manager. That's really valuable. Like you don't need to go be a woman's wrestler. It is, there's there's I'll tell you what. There's not a point to it. You know, she could if she reaches her best potential ever, it's going to be below, much below a lot of other people. So there's no need to do it. But there's a but. Her maximum potential as a manager might be an 8 out of 10, so just stick with that. Yeah, I don't know, man. WWE is a mess for me that I'm in the business and people are like, well, isn't the goal to get to WWE? At this point, I don't want to work for WWE. Oh, God. You know what I mean? They, yeah. can't, they, can't even, they can't even offer me enough money to sell my soul, man. Like, I'd rather just go to AEW. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather go to AAA in Mexico. I'd rather work for MLW or any of these indie promotions that are actually playing decent now. Yeah. You know, that they don't have all this co big corporation and big mess that they don't have good storytelling for their for their um for their uh for their talent. Like bro, Raw is unwatchable, bro. I mean Raw is like Raw, my oh. god. Raw is in, Raw is so enraging. I just basically like was a troll on my review the other night. Like it was so bad. Yeah. Like my, I just started raging on stuff and overacting that I was crazy about all these different things because it's so boring. But you know, listen, I would go to WWE because I'd take the money at this. You know, as myself, you know, I, I mean, I've probably only made, you know, a total of eight hundred dollars total of the last twelve years of commentating in all these indie companies. So if some company like WWE was like, want to be a commentator in our, in our commentator uh, training program, we'll give you. Eighty thousand dollars to sign on. I, I mean, I would do it because I mean, I never made money in it before, so that's why they get people, you know. And if it goes nowhere, it goes nowhere. But you you know that yeah, people are misused like crazy. Yeah, I feel you, man. Like I've I've been thinking about that too. I'm actually looking to uh, fill out the AW position for the Spanish commentary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're. They yeah, I mean, go at that one dude. So uh, just don't call the Asian you know, people. Uh, you know what I mean? Weird names, and I mean, just, you might just, be okay. Just don't, just, just don't say Kinson Makaya. My, my, you know, my, then, my, my then, question then is this: fine. My question is, was was Urbina uh, a heel commentator? Because if he was heel, I don't have a problem with him. You know, making fun of people like that. I think that's okay. But if no, you actually from. No, you know, uh, he wasn't, Joe. He was uh, just a regular, uh, um, he was just, um, uh, what's, that, what's, that, what's that Like called? a play-by-play -play or a color guy? or play-by-play. -play. Yeah, the heel commentator was actually a Alex Abrahentis. Oh, my God. And then he's making, like, Asian jokes and he's the play-by-play. -play. <laughs> yeah, Ed, but he didn't know his <laughs> mic was on, apparently. But, you oh. know, Dasha and, and, and Rosa were actually on there, too, and they were kind of, like, egging them all, like, oh, stop. That. You know why are you doing that? You know, but they didn't get fired. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, but Willie, I, Willie did. It's funny because a lot of the news articles said that Thunder Rosa and them were trying to get him to stop, but I, I couldn't tell from what I didn't think anybody was. I don't, I don't know. I, I couldn't tell. I was listening to it, you know, and I didn't. Well, they were since they were on air, they were kind of trying to make him stop like sarcastically, but they were trying to like basically tell him like, "Yo, you're on air." You know what I mean? Like. You wow. just said something that might be degradatory to some some people, and yeah, that's that's exactly how they that's exactly how it worked out. Man, I mean, I don't know. I I don't like firing people, but I mean, if that went over the air, I mean, that's a rough thing, I guess, for Tony Khan. I'm just somebody who doesn't think everybody's actually like a racist, terrible person. You you know, we we all like. I think a lot of people shit talk each other. And I don't, oh, yeah. you know, I don't think, I mean, if you investigate the guy and find out that he's really got some kind of hatred, 
then that's different. But if you investigate the guy and you're like, oh, he just told a shitty joke and he, or he was being a dickhead or he was saying racist things, but he's not, you know, I'm the kind of person that's like, whatever, then he's okay. He was just fuck. He said, I would maybe suspend him or something like that. But I guess, yeah, he had to fire him, I guess, in this day and age with everything, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe yeah, you could. Mess. Maybe you could fill the spot, but yeah, but but, but I would have I, I might have fired him too if he was the play by play guy. Like you're supposed to be the voice of the company on Spanish broadcast, and you're making weird jabs at people's race. Like ooh, like I don't, dude, you're not the heel commentator. You know, at least if he was the heel commentator, you could be like, you could suspend him. You know, you can kind of he's the heel guy. You can see how he went over the line, and you can say like, hey, listen, we want you to be a heel, but stay away from being racist to people like really blatantly. Yeah. Like we know no, you're Alex, not Alex. Yeah, Abrahenta is the one that's translated for Pensa. He's the heel commentator on the on the mic. Um, <laughs> and yeah, like Willie was the play-by-play guy. He was actually pretty good when he did Lucha Libre America, which is like a Spanish promotion. Right. Where there's like a lot of Puerto Rican and Mexican wrestlers. He was really good. He was one of their top, you know, announcers on there. And that's why he got the opportunity with AEW. But yeah, he, that, that was a slip-up, man. And, uh, wow. It came in, it came in bottom in the ass, you know what I mean? Especially Man. with with this soft, you know, viewership these days and stuff. And the attitude era, I remember seeing a bunch of this stuff, and nobody ever got fired. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, I mean, how many, you know, Jerry Lawler, Bobby Heenan, the list goes on, you know, of of weird, you know, racial jokes and like, oh, here he comes. He looks like what did they open the zoo today? You know, like, yeah, like oh, my yeah, God. Exactly. Like, like, it's like when Triple H buried Booker T. You remember that? In the ring? Yeah, yeah. And, like, that was racial. <laughs> well, fired, you know what I mean? Like, the, I mean, so, Booker T should have won no matter how you fucking oh, yeah. draw it up. That was. Oh, I think that's still one of the most dumbest ways to end a storyline ever. I don't care if Booker T would have won the title that night. He could have lost it the next night on Raw. For all I care. Well, I mean, I think they were night. they wanted to be racial because they wanted that to pull at your heartstrings. And and the point is, though, if you're going to do that, why is the payoff not that the guy wins then? Why is Booker T yeah. losing? Like, why did you? It's like you do all this stuff where it's like, oh, this is borderline over the top, but it's OK because it's going to be this payoff. But then there's no payoff. The guy is just everything you said about him. He loses still. It was just that was crazy. I don't know. Moss Blaze, yeah. you're the man, bro. Anything else you want to say before we get you out of here? Yeah, yeah, Joe, I actually wanted to talk about how Sucker! Uh, WWE's about to be go back on tour. Yeah. And I actually think it's a bad idea for them to do that. And they're going to realize really hard that they lost a lot of fans. Oh, yeah. That there's not going to be as many sales, that they should just keep what they're doing now. It seems like it's working and they're making a lot of money. So why go back on tour like four days a week when you know you don't have the same amount of fan base that you used to? Also, I realized like by watching WrestleMania and uh, Double or Nothing that uh, WrestleMania had 25,000 people and AEW had 5,000 people, mm-hmm. and those 5,000 people were more passionate than the 25,000 people that were at WrestleMania. It felt that way. Um, you know, they didn't have they, that was a big arena versus a tiny area, so the sound isn't going to be as good. You know, I get it. But I, I think WWE is going to do well at the beginning because I think people are going to come out, you know, because it's something to do. So I think the ticket sales might be all right at the beginning. But like you said, it wasn't that long ago before COVID that we were watching an entire section tarped off, a entire two sections tarped off, and now three sections tarped off. So, guys, remember, we were up to three sections tarped off. And what's it going to be like now? Because right now there are – um. There were 500,000 less people watching Raw than before the pandemic when we were seeing three tarps on a Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. So what happens wow. now? Yeah, so this but I think the first, you know, the first go around to all the cities might do okay because people will I don't know, people want to get out, I suppose, or people will be like, I'm vaccinated and I'm going out and fuck it all. Yeah, they'll be excited to go out there the once, and then once they see how shit the show is, they're like, yeah, I ain't coming back to this. Right, exactly. Like, I think the nostalgia yeah. and the and the vibe of, oh, it's back, you know, will carry people a bit. But, you know, like you said, no one's watching the show still. Um, so I, I, would, I would think that we'd be about where we were before the pandemic when they start, but... Reality is going to set in pretty soon, I think, because th- unless they change the product completely. Moss Blaze, that's a good call, man. As always, thank you, Moss Blaze. 
for the call. Buenos tardes, mi amigos. 316 day just subscribed. Because Stone Cold, the fact of the matter is, Vince McMahon, you want to talk to Stone Cold Steve Austin, I might as well beat your ass in the middle of the ring. Uh, Tim Vesoulis, thanks for subscribing to the channel. What's going on, Tim? I'm loaded on freaking caffeine. And apparently Jake had to drop his daughter off in a hurry. That's why he took off. But we are going to get him back, apparently. Uh, we got more people chiming in. It's going nuts. We got Anthony Torres subbing to the channel. We got uh, everybody and their mother subbing to the channel, getting weird and wet and wild. And I like it. Now we have Luke Rojas on the phone right now. What's up, Luke? Yo, hey, I'm just, I'm really shocked that they fired fucking, I mean, I get Lana, but Braun Strowman was world champion last year for like 140 days or something. He yeah. was main eventing pay-per-views. Fucking Aleister Black, they set this guy up to break up a fucking intercontinental championship match. Like, I just, I have no idea, like, what the fuck that, like, this decision-making. Like, why fire these guys? I just don't get it. Like, out of all the people you could fire, why the fuck are you keeping around Shayna Baszler? You know what I mean? What the fuck is she doing? Why don't you fire her instead well, of fucking guys I don't know. that actually got storylines for her? Well, Shayna Baszler isn't a storyline. She's in a big storyline with Alexa but, Bliss. Uh, yeah, a Regin the Reginald storyline. Fucking Aleister Black and Braun Strowman were both in like upper mid card to yeah, but you could semi main event. You could say this about like, everybody. Everybody is used like shit, right. so you could say this about anybody. I guess you're right. I mean, the only well, the mean, only yeah. person is Roman. The only person you'd be like, why would the, what the hell? The only the only person you could surprise me with if they fired would be Roman and the Usos. Those would be the only people. Anybody else, why not? Get rid of them. Everybody sucks. I, I think I think it would be weird if you fired, like, Brian, to, like, before all before whatever happened to him. Okay, yeah, him. Daniel Bryan but, being like, fired is weird, yeah. AJ getting fired, I don't think will ever happen. That's a good point, like AJ. AJ. AJ, Daniel Bryan, AJ. Roman, and Usos. Anybody else? Um, Drew McIntyre, probably. At this point, because now he seems to be like Vince's favorite again, or at least on Raw, his second favorite. <laughs> He's right. like, here, we'll give you the shitty, we'll give you the shitty semi-main event on Raw. It's really funny how that, how that's just completely changed. Now that's like the B show that nobody wants to be on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, but, you definitely don't want to be on Raw. No doubt about it. You know, I I wouldn't even want to be on NXT at this point. That, I mean, not that the fucking show is awful. It's just like. Since Cole lost the belt last year, it's just been like a fucking. It's just been meh, like at best. You know what I mean? Like Jake, Balor had a boring reign. Jake, why don't you call Skype, brother? I don't know what's going on with Discord, but Discord is just spinning in circles like this for me. So I don't know what happened to Discord, but it's dead. It's added. It's just it's saying I'm having connection problems with Discord. I don't understand that. So, yeah, Jake, just call Skype, man. I don't know what's going on. I didn't know, but apparently they, they it's been frozen for a while. No, go ahead. They wouldn't uh, release Sasha. I don't think they would release Sasha. I think Vince likes her a lot, too. So, like, there's a very few hands, like, handful of people that I think are safe from ever being released. But, like, this truly shows you that, like, WWE don't give a fuck. They'll be like, you know what? You're just out. Sorry. We don't like We just don't. Feel like paying well, me anymore? I would tell. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't really. I'm not shocked. I'm not mad. Everyone all of a sudden gets mad when they release people. Like, what are they doing? Uh, what do you mean? What are they doing? They ru <laughs> they ruin Braun Strowman. He's been ruined for four years. They ruin Lana, and she sucks in the ring. Uh, the only one, I guess, it doesn't make sense that Alistair Black was released because he was just about to start a storyline. So that's kind of just weird. But at the same time, they still didn't know what they were doing and things like that. So. I could see. Uh, I mean, I think they had a pretty good, pretty good like. I, I don't think whoever was in charge of creative of SmackDown knew that was going to happen. Because like whoever's in charge of creative on SmackDown, not saying that it's like right, fucking on. like a million times better than the Raw, but like whoever, it's it's definitely different people who are like booking that fucking show. So I don't know if they knew that prior to like, oh yeah, this guy's getting released in two weeks. We'll have him interrupt an intercontinental championship. You know, just like even even Aleister Black was like, "What the fuck? This was completely 
out of left field. I don't even well, know. Well, yeah, because what the fuck because is this on. we've we've said this before. Vince doesn't really fully control. Vince doesn't care that much about SmackDown. He always leaves it to somebody else. So come here, Finn. You want a hug? So what could be happening is, um, oh, okay, buddy. See, all right. My son, my youngest, came down like oh, I'm upset. Um, the, the, you know, we heard about this from Road Dog when Road Dog ran SmackDown. Several times, I would tweet Road Dog and say, "Road Dog, what's up, dude? You guys were doing this with this guy. Now all of a sudden he's gone, or now all of a sudden this is happening." And you remember, Road Dog used to respond and say, "Yeah, I'm kind of surprised too, because we were in the middle of a storyline, or we were in the middle of this, that, or the other thing." And then I would DM Road Dog, and yeah. Road Dog would Road Dog would tell me in a DM, he'd be like. You know, he, I wouldn't I wouldn't say 100 percent who and what, but he would say like, yep, we had no idea. We were writing. We were setting up this. And now the person's gone all out of nowhere. Not our not our call. Alistair so, Black sounds yeah. very, very depressed. And what's going on, Luke? Yeah, he sounds very upset on Twitter. I mean, he, he's gone ahead and sent out some tweets saying that he's gathering his thoughts. He did not expect this. It came out of left field. He said, we just started the Dark Father character. Thank you to everybody, you know, and it just it, it didn't sound like you wanted to leave either. Yeah. So you know what's weird with with some of those vignettes too. Like I don't know if I was the only one who got this, but like with some of those like animated vignettes, it kind of looked like they were trying to make it seem like his father was like the Undertaker or something, because the guy yeah. had like a big Undertaker hat. Like it was very vague. I don't think that was exactly what they were doing, but like I could see them leading to something with that. I mean, there's yeah, so many ideas you could have used. There's, like his entrance two weeks ago, like just coming in with no music, just a big fucking cloud of smoke, like that that was badass. So yep. I mean, there was so much shit you could have still done with the guy. Uh, he, like he's one of the only guys. Like I I didn't I never was that big of a fan of him in NXT, but I feel like as time has gone by and the, like more matches, like more of his older matches that I've seen, I realize how fucking like awesome like his matches were. Maybe not. I wasn't too invested with his character. But like, dude, that fuck the black mask, bl black mask, the yeah. black mask is is like a fucking is out like one of the most awesome finishers. Just like the RKO, the because you can hit it anytime, anywhere, out of nowhere, and it's super effective, and it was well protected in NXT. And think about when they first debuted, Ricochet and Aleister Black came up together. They were white hot, the crowd loved them, his entrance was over, but it was more than just an entrance, because they wowed them with yeah. their in-ring abilities. I I'm surprised Ricochet, even, you know, he wants to be there too with his contract, like Joe had mentioned. I mean... But most of these people don't want to be let go. They wanted to be there. And AEW obviously can't pay them as much. So Joe had the, the right idea. You go there, you make a couple million dollars, and then you come back, and now you're set for life if you handle it right, and that's all there is to it. But you know you know who else is screwed is Big E because I think this feud was going to be money, and now he's gone. Like, uh, that's – they were <laughs> – yeah, Big E is kind of screwed. He had a great foe. This isn't the yep. first, well, I mean, you never know. They have released people before and hired them back, so maybe maybe that will happen. I don't I don't know. But I mean, fucking like that really did just screw over everything for Big E. What is he gonna go do? Feud with fucking Apollo again? I mean, I'd rather not. Like we've seen that for way too many fucking uh Well that's months. the that's it's the real problem. There's only new. one women's tag team left. Yeah, they broke up the riot squad. They broke up Lana and Naomi. Not like we we wanted Lana and Naomi, but you know that that we yeah, have that they could fight. 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 There's only the one team yeah, left because Shayna Baszler, Nia Jax just broke up, so we've got uh, Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose to go against those championships and Natalia. were That's only it. ever. Those championships were only ever relevant when Bailey and Sasha were carrying them like fucking props last year. Like yeah. they were the same equivalency of when. Of when fucking um, H HBK won the European title, it was just a prop for him to carry. It wasn't anything special. Or when, but it's Dean like, oh, cool, the cool, they're champions. U.S. title, yeah. I see yeah, that, Dean but, but even still, I mean, the, <laughs> it, it, it was we, so we, weird we, to see him in a feud with Evolution, still champion. Like it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that was nuts back then, but. Uh, you figure with the women's tag titles, they've never been able to really get them over. The Iconics had a good win, people were excited for, but then they didn't utilize them, and then they let them go just recently too. So I mean, I, 
we get the same repeat matches before. Now it's only going to get worse because we're cutting down the roster. And no, not everybody deserves to be there. And I, I understand that. And not everyone's going to work out. Not everyone is going to be a superstar. But the people that they have let go is shocking because they've had certain ones in the middle of new stories, uh, you know, like Aleister Black. And it's just like we just saw you debut. Same thing with Wolf. You know, they had him on NXT. We we see these things where you're in mid-sentence and they just cut them off and forget about them. By the way, I got a quick update because a few minutes ago, Carlo, I'm sorry, Juan, Juan Carlos told me that it is what I thought, which was what I said the other day, luckily, um, because I listened to it, was that, you know, Thunder Rosa was telling him to stop. She was like, no, 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 chill out. Don't do that. Don't say that. So she was trying to stop it. Yeah, she um, was laughing as in like a, a uncomfortable. Yeah, like oh my god, you she just was like, said uh, that. "Stop! No, please, this is bad." Like that kind of. She wasn't laughing yeah. with at him. It was yeah, more she like she was uncomfortable, like not burying him. Like oh my god, stop! We're live. Like she didn't want to make it obvious. She was just like, "Ha ha! Oh my god, don't do that! No, don't do that! No, no, no! What are you doing? Chill out! Chill out! Chill out!" Like that sort of thing. So yeah, um, but yeah, I, I never say anything like that when the mics. You know, I mean, you think the mic's off? Like, you got a microphone on you. I mean, what are you, you doing? Even if, even if you think it's off, don't say it because you have a microphone in front of you. That's, you said that from the get-go, and that's a rule that we follow, you know. I just, just you always got to assume it's on. And if then, you have a personal call you got to take or anything like that, you know, you told me years ago, walk away. Because you never know. What if you didn't hit mute? What if, some, you know, things happen, mistakes happen. Right. It's crazy to I me mean, that. We, we know mistakes happen. That's how I was born. But. This has just been a nightmare scenario for a lot of people, and I hope it turns into a blessing for them, honestly, and and they're able to reinvent themselves and find a way to better their lives going forward. I mean, Buddy Murphy is an incredible talent. He really is, was like the best kept secret for a while. They really, I, I I don't understand the Buddy Murphy thing. I mean, the guy, you have him with Seth all year last year. Um, I mean, of course, Seth's whole fucking faction just completely fall flat. I mean, you could nobody. The maybe, fact maybe Alexa tried to replace. Him. Maybe every time Alexa saw him, she thought of. And and, uh, and with the rumor of <laughs> the, one time, <laughs> the one time he shoved it up, his, it. the one time he shoved it up at her asshole, and it's just like, oh no, oh no, she he was she was reminded of their pig every time she saw Alex at Murphy, so she was like, get rid of him every time. Like <laughs> Vince is like, fire Murphy every time she sees him. It reminds her of the relationship. I mean, yeah, that could be it. Yeah, big. man, that must suck from for Murphy. First, you first you lose that ass. Like you lose fucking Alexa Bliss as your fucking fiance. They were like engaged forever. Then you get into this hot fucking group with, with Seth Rollins. This is gonna make your fucking career. Then COVID happens, and those two fat guys like get fired or whatever. And then you just <laughs> lose and lose and lo- he basically became oh AOP. They, that's they, right. they basically. They basically replaced Buddy Murphy with Jay Uso because he just became the lackey guy who loses all the time. Yeah. And that's what Jay Uso is. Yet somehow Jay Uso is like is like you know m- like much more interesting and has way more stock than than Buddy Murphy even though they served essentially the same role as guy because who just they gets protect the shit Jay better in storyline and they allow him to win as well as lose. Right. It's I mean, not yeah, a full 50-50, but they make him feel more important. Strictly He's with the storylines with this Roman. year. Yeah, no He's doubt. I mean, wins look year. at Shayna Baszler. She's had what five or six wins on the main roster since she made it up in the last two years since she debuted. She's lost every tag match monster. that they've lost has been her, her taking the pinfall. She should be a dominant beast, and that's not what's happening. She's feuding with a friggin' doll right now. And my worry is, seeing how prevalent Alexa is since after Mania and Bray non existing anymore, will we see Bray get fired like the rest? It's a worry, but I could see them letting him go. Um, no you know, one's boy. no one's safe. No one is fully protected anymore. I could What's I could see them letting that? anybody go. Even Cena, I could see them letting go at this point. I could not see well, them what, not letting. I'm going go over to this. Twitch right now to listen because I'm going to play this audio because Tommy End is live right now with Zelina Vega on a Twitch channel, and I have the audio right now. Wow. So we're going to listen to that right now. All right. Hear what they have to say. Go ahead and chime in. He's live right now. We have video, Exclusive too. Exclusive Joe Broden. 
Well, let's go. Uh, we'll have to go over and see what is going on. Let me get the link. He's, How many he's more really low. Words can you fit in there? <laughs> he's he's really low right now. Um, yeah, he's really low. He's trying to fix his microphone. Let me see. Braun Strowman, Lana, Alistair Black. Is my voice? Have an orange there it is. Yeah, Santana Garrett as well. You know, it's just Buddy Murphy. Okay. There we go. And we don't know. I mean, we, we heard earlier that the first bit of news, uh, you know, the WWE is experimenting with a new ring design. And you're like, what the hell are they thinking now? They want to go ahead and use a plastic guys, material to absorb see, bumps better and less some of the damage on the superstars' guys, bodies. See, and they're going to test it uh, with NXT sad. before Oh, you guys can't hear this because we're not on Discord. Oh, that yeah, you guys can't hear this. I'm okay. Fuck. I'm sure there's going to be like. Try to tune into the stream. I'm, sure I'm going to mute. It's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be dark days for me. That's going to be bad days, and you know, um, it's all kind of like, you know, up and down. And uh, I think we uh, we should have a, a nice conversation. Um, I'm getting texts like crazy at the same time as well. Uh, there's a crazy hype trend going on. It says 400 viewers, but that can't be right. Oh, you know, I'm actually talking to cult leader right now. <laughs> I'm actually, they just texted me. No, Siri, shut up. All right, we got uh, live audio of Tommy End. 5,000, that's good. Right All now, right. reacting. So, um, all right, guys, let's have a talk. You know? Wow. Um, you know, it's... um. You know, like, obviously, you know, I got told it was budget cuts. Um, whether that is budget cuts or not, doesn't matter. I'm here now, and I've had a great time. I've had uh, a phenomenal four or five years in the WWE. Um, you know, if I, if I, if I didn't, I, you know, we wouldn't have had so many viewers right now. And um, I'm just really thankful for a lot of things that WWE has done for me. And, I'm uh, like, the most thankful I am is that I, I was given a platform that – Although in limited amount, I was able to give you guys parts of uh, of myself, of my character, and you know, uh, I was really excited for this Dark Father stuff. Um, it was actually, for the most part, created by myself. Uh, I wrote a lot of the context, and slowly but surely, the idea was that it was, you know, it was gonna. I'll thank you guys so much for the subs. I appreciate that, guys. Um, slowly but surely it was going to unfold into an obviously more understanding of what he was talking about it wasn't going to be yeah and, and, and already wasn't as cryptic as it was before uh which was obviously not by my choice really um you know i think i think you know being on the main roster um In all the time, all my conversations I've ever had with Vince, he was always very positive about me. I, I have a good relationship with Vince. Um, I always, always told him how I felt. He always respected it about me. Um, and he always uh, praised me on my creativity and my ability to have manners and respect, but still being honest with him about how I felt. And... Um, you know, you never really truly know why things end the way they did, but all I can tell you is that from my point of view and the words that I was always given was that Vince was always pretty high in me. I did well on television. Um, it was just that we could never really nail down what it is that we wanted Alistair to be on the main roster versus what he was in NXT, right? And That's interesting. Know, and and where, where, where that problem lied, I don't know. You know, at the same time, you have to realize that you know, when I when I was under Heyman's wing, Heyman fought tooth and nail for me. But he was lying always, to you, Tommy. You know, at the end of the day, when a decision is made, the decision is made. Call you him. Know? How do and I call like, him? Like Heyman couldn't protect everyone, and he tried his best, and I tried my best. One of the things that I actually did with the room promos um, is I don't know if you ever noticed, but I, I like you know I didn't really have a lot of control over those. I was just new on the main roster, and I didn't want to be that guy that like complained about everything. Stanley Bars, I thank you so much for your subs, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, I could have control over is certain words. The idea that Alistair had this like small ability to look into the future. He had like um, 
like precognitive abilities. So I would use my opponent's ring gear, their colors in my background. So, you know, when I wrestled the Singh brothers, I had pink in the background. And uh, I think with Buddy, I had like white and uh, white and goldish or yellowish light in the background. So that would hint at, um, you know, at, at my next opponents. And I did all these like, you know, when I when I said a ring and I said, um, you know, I feel like a caged animal that was hinting at me and Rowan, you know, because he was walking around with that caged animal. So Alistair, Alistair Black, I, I tried to have a lot of like, um, like Easter eggs, you know, Easter eggs into into like my backstage promos and stuff like that. I never wanted it to be I wanted I wanted to give something that could pe people could unravel. So even in my ring gear, my wrestling gear, what I used to do. Is like the reason why I wear so many jackets is because I would literally take tarot cards and I would lay tarot cards and I would pick a deck. Uh, I, I would pick cards from the tarot card and and I would have ha Hannah put it on my. This back, is just too complicated uh, with, for the WWE uh, audience. Vince you know, would say, with I feel how like. How would feel and like people would ask me about like why is your gear green? Well, so for instance, the way I interpreted it, right when I when I wrestled Buddy three times in a row, uh, I think I went from black to black on black to being like no green to black on black to going back to like having that like olive drab or olive drab, and I think I ended with like that like army green, shiny army green. So. Um, Alistair would get so mad, you know, so angry with him, sign that he turned green. And I always wanted to have like my, um, you know, like my, 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 um, my gear to reflect Alistair's mood or like how Alistair would interpret it. And like all the colors were significant for um, how Alistair felt in, in that, um, in that moment. So the black on black was basically full on war mode. If I, if I was wearing black on black, that was me being like, that was Alistair Black really being, you know, angry and aggressive and much more like, you know, uh, on the money. And then um, the green represented Alistair being poisoned. You know, he was like, he was poisoned with anger. So that's kind of why I, would, I know uh, why this guy's gone. Vince, the Vince thinks the WWE um, audience is dumb. It would know, never know poison, any of this. You know, like take it from a guy who, 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 especially in his younger years, had a lot of like anger issues. Um, you know, the, the, like, it can infect you, it can poison you. So that's why, you know, green, he couldn't handle I, I would wrestle like slightly different as well. I would be more aggressive, more striking, uh, less, um, less, 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 less on the ground, you know, stuff like that. Um, and, you know, and that's the funny thing, right? I did all that while having shackles on. All these like things that I created and made and done when I had shackles on. And so now I don't have shackles anymore, which I'm really happy to an extent, you know, cause that's, that's, that's the blessing in all of this. And, you know, I'm, I'm really thankful for WB to give me a platform to kind of like allow me to explore that a little further as well. Um, wow. You know, I, uh, I, I, I've always taken like great, great pleasure in being able to create like, you know, my character and, um, you know, especially the stuff with the Easter eggs. The reason why I came out with that demon leg, for instance, right? Uh, I started doing that when I came back after uh, after Johnny attacked me, after he attacked me, uh, the, 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 the parking lot angle, right? A lot of stuff happens in that parking lot, guys. Never go there. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, I got to get my, um, my energy in, right? So I... Um, I felt like, you know, the one thing you have to understand about Alice, Alistair Black was basically the devil with memory loss. He knew that. This like, is way, you know, no wonder Vince wrong. couldn't deal with this. It's way too complicated for Vince. And um, or I for, it, thought it was for the fans, concept. according to like, Vince. What if, you know, when, when, when Lucifer fell to earth and he smacked on the ground, what if he woke up with like, how did I get here? And that was kind of the idea that I had behind Alistair. Um, and I, you know, I used a lot of layers in that, but, you know, so the more angry Alistair became, the more he looked like, you know, parts of him were made out of, uh, made out of, uh, 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 you know, like a demon that had like demon flesh. That's why the kick pat was like fleshy looking and, uh, you know, you know, s stuff like that. So, yeah, so v Bat Gamer, the I thing was actually my call. I felt that it would be good for me to continue with the eye because, um, you know, my eye got taken out. My eye was black. And then when I came back, I, I, like, I was like, I don't want to, you know, just play it off. Plus, you know, the more research I did on, like, um, cult leaders in, in, in pop culture and stuff like that, 
um, they always had like a weird aesthetic trait, which was like they had like really white like hair or they like you know had light eyes and stuff like that. So I wanted to kind of take that with me, you know, me and that character because it was it, it was a good reference and. Um, uh, I, I think the glasses made it complete because the funny thing is like those are actually my glasses. I have driving glasses nowadays. Um, I've, I've like very, I got very some more minor, donations uh, to play. I'll play them in a few minutes. Z the Reaper, thank you. I'm going to play it. Eric as well, everybody. That's kind of how that came to be. I will play your donations in a minute. Um, but yeah. So, you know, that's why Alistair Black, you know, the big fleshy jackets and stuff like that all had to do with either the importance of the match or the um, you know the anger that he was in you know the more angry he was the more he represented like looking like 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 a demon almost so you know stuff like that and I did tons of like Easter eggs because I always I, I never wanted to present you guys with something that didn't have layers and a lot of the promos that I did as cryptic as they were they had layers um, a lot of the promos weren't my writing, unfortunately. Um, I, I, I always felt like, do you guys uh, remember, um, do you guys remember the Money in the Bank promo Mike is so low. On AJ, where I stepped out of the dark. I did the promo step back in the dark. Yeah, he's way too into this for WWE. Well, that was the first time I actually kind of did like, all right, fuck it. I'm gonna do what I want to do. If they get mad at me, it'll get mad at me. And that promo got like praise, crazy, you know. And then they, we never went back to it, um, you know. So it was always, uh, you know, it was difficult. Like, and the one thing I also want to say, right? Um, don't get mad at our creative. Our creative tries well are there, no longer there. You know, their creative tries, their absolute hardest, and they're good people working there. There's good people. Um, very creative, talented people. I'm very thankful for our creative. I'm, uh, I've always had a good relationship with like, you know, Bruce and stuff like that. And like Bruce was also, also one of the people that, you know, tried to protect me in a lot of situations. And he doesn't know that I know, but I know. Um, you know, he, uh, he wanted to get me out of the room and he wanted to like, you know, because like a lot of the consensus were no one moves like him. No one does what he does. No one has his intensity, which I was always thought, you know, you know, that's the exact stuff that I focused on. You know, on. wrestling like, kind of has done that, Jay Swiss. a hybrid of traditional pro wrestling with, like, a new age style of, like, striking. I feel that if I may be so bold, I think in the last five years I've proven to be one of the more influential strikers of this, gen this generation, and I will continue to do so because, obviously, I'm not done. Um, Gorilla Press, thank you very much for your, uh, for your subsequent. Thank you, dude. <clears throat> um, and it's, uh, you know, it's 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 – it's 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 bittersweet, you know, because I, I I owe everything to WWE, and you know, not to diminish my prior work, but obviously my prior work got me to the dance. So this tells you Bruce was running SmackDown, and Bruce was working with Alistair, and all of a sudden Vince or somebody pulled the plug on Alistair on Bruce. Despite numerous conversations that I've had with Vince, um, and everybody trying really hard. And, uh, you know, I think I did numbers on my self-esteem, too, because at one point you're like, well, you know, the, the, the ratings are good. The numbers are good. The merch is good. Why are we not, you know? And um, it's like one of those things where they, like, the, 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 the word intrigue was always there. Oh, we find you very intriguing. I'm like, okay, good. Let's, you know, let's present something then. Let's do something. And um, I, I have, I have, thrown so many things at the wall because I keep creating I keep creating characters and gimmicks and storylines I over and over and over and over and over and over wow DJ run thanks for the 25 bomb dude shit holy fuck thanks dude wow <laughs> damn um <laughs> you know damn yeah, Alistair uh, Black is richer than me and he's getting more donuts I think my character like what like the first conversation I ever had and funny thing is like I remember all these things is like I said to Hunter I said look I just want to be, you know, all the all the metal bands that kids use to rebel against the system, against their parents, and as as cliche as that sounds, it's relatable, right? Because everybody, especially nowadays, especially when you're young, it's so difficult to be understood by by uh, by a different generation. You know, I wanted people to, you know, have the consensus of like understanding that my character was was like a cool dude, at, you know, like like a, a mysterious guy, and at the same time, you know, having a hard hitting style. 
but also having a sense of being relatable to the point of, you know, I, like I, I understand what this what this character's going through because, like, mind you, it was a character. There's like one of the funnest thing in the world is that there is generally a group of people that are convinced that I'm part of the Illuminati and that I sacrifice kids and stuff like that. That is absolutely by far my favorite thing, or one of the one of my favorite things. <laughs> it makes no sense, you know what I mean? Like, it, like I remember that I think that um, there was this. Um, God, what's it called? Um, there was this 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 conspiracy group with a lot of subscribers that did this video on me. It's like, oh my God, look, he's wearing all the symbols and blah, 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 blah. And my thing is like for like the past two decades, I focused on conspiracies. Like I know how conspiracies work and that's how I got like a, an entire group of people to think that what I did was like uh, like authentic, which I think is great. You know, I think that's amazing that I got people to generally believe that there was this like, you know, this like authentic Illuminati satanic worship. And by the way, the Illuminati and satanic are two different things. Satanic is not devil worship. It's Luciferian. But, you know, you can't tell these people anything. But it got to the point where they thought that, like, you know, I have wind spirals on my arm, right? This is uh, this is Barong. He's a wind god. He's an energy god. So he's sh like there's wind coming out of his mouth. So people thought that this thing, because there's this, some weird nutty conspiracy group out there that says that spiral tattoos is, is a way for people to... Uh, um, like, like, find other like, like, like child molesters and stuff like that. So they're like, "Whoa, you know, it's right there." Because people want to see what they want to see. Specifically, dumb people do. Um, like, the funny thing is, is like, gotta I've clean that pop filter. Since I was ten years old, so I know exactly how conspiracies work, and that's also how I got to the point where the, you know this guy. But that one was just, and then WB had to kill, uh, had to kill that channel because like they, they nearly. Um, they nearly, they nearly uh, sued them because they were slandering me. You know, they were saying that I was a pedophile and stuff, and I was like, I was like, fucking mind blowing. But at the same time, it's kind of <laughs> oh my funny God. That people are gullible enough to kind of like get into that. And you know, I, t I take pride that there is like a line that I walked for a very long time where people kind of went, "Is he? Is he not?" Um, because of course, a lot. Anybody of who thought Alistair like, Black was a pedophile is out of their minds. Life in terms of like, you know, the dark father is based on my childhood. And I'll, I'll get into that like at one point, not now, not this stream, but, um, you know, it's, um, you know, there's, there's parallels of like that character, but obviously. Let I'm me help you. Let me help you clean that microphone, you, Alistair. Look at this. I'm a worshiping guy. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in anything. So it's weird for me to say that I would acknowledge the existence of a devil if I would not acknowledge the existence of a God, right? That you, you can't have one without the other. That just doesn't exist. So. Clean. Go get a roller, Alistair. Shadow, thank you for the subs, man. Appreciate it, dude. Oh, you got the bomber? Hell yeah. Appreciate oh, my God. What happened yeah, to his man. audio? Thank you guys for supporting Black Mask Clothing as well, man. I really, really, really dig that. Um, man, I, I, I have so many good memories of, like, WB. I have so many good memories of a lot of things. I'm really thankful. It was, you were just there. Was like, oh, Shit, wow, mom! Dude, right? Jesus. You become Holy shit, dude. a shit bomb. Uh, no matter, Shane of Basil are going that. next. Mark my thank words. You. Appreciate that, dude. Savage Beast, thank you. Silverback, thank you. Um, Randy Viper says Shane of Basil are going next. Know, mark uh, my words. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, there'll I, be no I, one I left, so though. Memories, Randy Viper. I remember when I had That's that the problem. With, uh, there'll be no one left. First time the, the world really took notice. Thank you, Randy Viper. I, I, I never tell you, right? I wasn't really always super content with my debut match because. Um, it, it didn't go the way it was supposed to go, but you know, it's a, there's a long story. But um, I'm always thankful for Manny Andrade. Was was he's, like, he's an incredible wrestler. Uh, but I was never happy with my debut because I feel that it wasn't what I wanted it to be. It wasn't what they wanted it to be. But you know, the good thing about it is that we found ways to you know uh, enhance it and um, you know build up from it, which I thought was great. I think that. Um, I think after my match with Dream, I remember like apparently that was when a lot of people in the wrestling world were like, "Whoa, okay, what what's going on there?" And the, the, the cool thing was is that was Jeez. the first time they gave me complete freedom to just do my own match, and uh, you know they put trust in me. And uh, I think when I proved that I could do a good storytelling match and I could lead a match and um, you know take someone else and take them to the next level. You know, it, it proves that you can be more than just a star yourself, but you can, you know, uplift other people too, which was great. Um, you know, and, and, and like, you know, fast forward to the main roster. I think, I think. Interesting. The last three, four months of me being in NXT when I tagged with, uh, 
uh, with Ricochet were probably professionally. I'm sneezing from some the cats. Of my favorite moments in uh, in in wrestling, me, because me and Trevor would have Raw on Monday, SmackDown on Tuesday, NXT on Wednesday, get one day off, Friday back on the road, and we did that for months. You know, we got so well oiled and that's where like I had the most fun where I just I really felt like a professional wrestler, you know what I mean? I felt like a professional, you know? And I I felt I was untouchable at that point. You can throw you could have thrown anything at me and I would have been able to just like knock it out the park and uh you know, it's 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 like you always have to work within the boundaries of what you know they give you. And I feel that is the true professional, right? If there's no cuffs and you can do whatever you want, you know. It's 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 a different landscape, but if you're able to shine in a place where you have boundaries and and, and, and you're surrounded by rules and you know and I'm a big fan of having boundaries I really do because it forces me to be more creative, and you can shine there I feel that's what makes you know that's 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 right there is a testimony of being a professional, um, you know I, I, I like one of the things I I've always like loved wrestling like at the time the revival the pinnacle now, um, you know because they were. You know, like 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 me 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 and and and, and yeah, me and them have the same pinnacle. way of thinking when it comes to like upholding rules and stuff, and uh, you know, making sure everything works within the box because that's what makes it fun. You know, that's what makes that what that, that's what makes the competition fun. You know what I mean? Like, I think like that forces me to be creative in a, in, in a very different way, and I've always liked that. I've always liked that part of like challenging myself, um, and I feel. Um, it's Bob. Yes, Heyman pushed really hard for me. Yeah, um, I feel that that's that's always a that's problem. Really made me like into like a much better. I can say it again, professional wrestler. You know what I mean? Um, because you know, and now I had to think, and a lot of times I had to think on my feet. A lot of times we just went out there and we just kind of like you know we just did things and like oh guys you got three minutes go home and we actually had a whole ten minute thing planned or the other way around. He's you live right minutes, now guys, on. Um, just added five minutes and now you have to think. You know they did that with me. And it's Buddy Lena Vega's so uh, like, Twitch channel. Like, hey guys, you got the Trinidad. You know, you eighty seven hundred you know, people I watching. Love that. I love that. I love being able to work on the fly and just you know I, I, I thrive on that kind of stuff. Um, it's. Um, it's just a it's just a crazy crazy landscape, man. WWE, and everybody's experience is different. Mine experience was great. Um, last two years, it's obviously it is what it is. But what can I do? Do I sit and mope about it? Do I go, well, they didn't ever give me a good shot, or like you know, it is what it is. And you know, unfortunately, this was supposed to be my shot. That's that was what the consensus were. This is you know we're gonna this is it. Like you're we're gonna push this character, and then. You know this happens, so you can't. You know, like it's this. This is an everlasting, evolving, fluctuating business, and I'm very thankful for for uh, for for Vince and for Hunter and for Bruce and for Heyman and for like you know all the people that have always helped me out. Um, you know, Randy Orton, um, Bray Wyatt, Rowan. Um, you know, John, rest in peace. You know, um, just being surrounded by great people, and I think like Roman Reigns. You know, like. Honest to God, one of the fucking best locker room leaders I've ever had in my life. You know, same with the Usos. Great people. And I'm so stoked that they're pushing Apollo, right? That's a guy that needed a break. And he's he's knocking it out the park. He's so good at his character. He's so good at his role, you know? And it's... Um, Breaking kayfabe. It's exciting to see that, that now I can do a lot of things. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm glad that I'm able to go and, and, and start doing new things and, and, and you know, um, being able to create different things because, you know, you guys have seen that vignette that I made on my, uh, on my, on my Instagram account, right? I'm pretty sure some of you have seen that where I, you know, the eye bleeding and stuff like that. You, well, Wrestling Classic, we no. did, but it was, it was on live events. I wrestled him a ton of times on live events. Thank you. Uh, Roni, I, I don't know. I, all I knew is that the plan was for me and E to go at it. And that's it. That's, that's all, I, all, all I knew. Uh, it was supposed to kick off this Friday, and here we are. That's as much as I know. Well, interesting stuff coming from uh, Tommy End here. Obviously, Alistair Black. Very crazy uh, that this oh, has thank happened. You guys. Um. I think he's wrapping it up. He's kind of looking yeah, at his I chat. I remember my, uh, 
my fans. Yeah, I would have loved to work um, against Bray. I think Bray's great. He's a guy that, like, fights really hard for all his stuff. I'll probably, so I'm probably going to, I'm going to listen to the rest of this later and probably recap it. See if there's anything interesting that I can pick up uh, from what he's saying here. Uh, and for what, he, what he continues to answer and say, um, we'll listen to it a little bit longer here, though. Ninety day no compete. Come don't worry, I'm still here. Yeah, the thing is, like, um, you know, the promo that I did on um, on Instagram was supposed to actually. Uh, there was a there was a moment where they actually wanted to like air that on TV. There was talks about you know, and I said to him, I have it for you. You can take it, you know, because it was a one minute vignette of like a story arc as to what happened after you know the eye got taken. And I kind of tied father in there already. Lana got released too, yeah. Lana's been yeah, released. Saying, Alistair like, yeah, Black's released. Right. Braun Strowman right. has been released. Right, so that's kind of and, started, uh, but they never Murphy's you know, released. Down, and but again, the consensus were, wow, this is so good, so great. Ruby Riot awesome. has been released. Santana Garrett is and released. Just, like gets worked against. There's a lot of like. Not right now. You know, waves into WWE. There's a lot of uh, like yeah, if you've never been there, you can't imagine it. You know, a and bit. you know that's another thing as well. Don't listen to these reporters that Ooh. talk about you know, oh, Alistair Black this, oh, Vince was never high in Alistair. Like that's not true. That's not true at all. What 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 murdered me um, was I think the seven months at home. Was that? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Um, you know, don't listen to them because they don't know anything. They don't have insiders. Um, they do. Some people, people do. People tell them warped stories. Um, Most of them are BS, though. You know, like when, um, mm -hmm. you know, when, when, like, I think in the span of seven months that I sat home, there were like seven different reports. Vince, like, uh, that my NXT request got shot down. That's not true at all. Didn't get shot down at all. Actually, I got oh. raised. I was actually like, that's a really good idea. But his thought was like, no, I just want to do it this way first. And then if it doesn't work out, I can always, you know. Uh, put you back in NXT. Um, Ooh, Meltzer's wrong. That too, but it, it wasn't like shot down hard at all. No, not at all. Like, and this is the problem, right? They're not in those talks. They're not in those conversations. They don't know any of these people. Uh, don't waste your money on it because it's it's like for the most part, it's a five percent truth, and they'll fabricate ninety five percent around it just so that you click on it. I've always said um, that. And it's 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 he just guesses. sad to see that like uh, you know this business has become like a tabloid thing. It's always been that so way. Strange because like. You know, why are you scamming people? You know, why why are you feeding this like negative narrative continuously? Why are you and I get it because negativity sells, but you also have to realize you have to be smarter than that system because I can guarantee you from being in that company and seeing some of these articles pop up, ninety five percent of the time was just fabric. He like, always guesses. That's was, was what most of it is. We've always like, said that. Asuka yeah. leaving a live event and immediately was like, Oh, Asuka mad, uh, storm that live event. No, she was just done with her match. She just went to the next town. You know, you can sensationalize anything you want. Um, there was a story about that Lars Sullivan at one point was supposed to be the NXT uh, 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 before me. It's never a thing. You know, it's all just, you know uh, NXT apparently not high in Alistair Black. No. You know, the thing is, and it's, it's, it's frustrating because it like... Knuckles. It puts us in a shit position because, you know, you as fans, and I don't blame you for the most part, like that's the that's the closest source of news that you have. But it's not a source of news. It's fabricated and it's fabricated to make you think a certain way. It's programming your brain to like all oh, these mother efforts, you know? And a lot of times it's not it's not right. Sure, there's times where, you know, you know, where it's right, but I mean, a broken clock is right twice a day too, right? So, you know, um and I was like the, uh, oh, the plans changed line. Yeah, that's like literally the biggest cop out in the world. Um, as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, I think, I think I was remotely, I was spared for the most part. I think, you know, like despite those things, I think, you know, there, there's, there's clearly also good intent in some of them. Um, but, you know, there's the thing is like validating your sources and validating your stories versus just like blatantly pulling out stuff that Alistair Black you know, buries you know, Meltzer uh, and dirt sheets. A weeks ago with, uh, with, 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 That's with my headline. And guess what? It's so real. Much. Nothing but hate comments and like, like, like often it's all because someone was like, oh, sign them, sign up to my Patreon and oh, I have news. But in reality, there was no news. There, there, there literally was no news. There was, there was, there was just, you know, 
there was nothing you know and it's it it, it, it like it's it's the same people that all talk about being supportive and helping each other out and then doing stuff like that and don't realize the harm that they cause and uh you know i i, I like i uh you know i like I, I i i blame people like that for that i just don't i, I don't like that you know um it's it's it, and it doesn't have to be that way you know like and that's that's the same thing because it like it, it it does more harm than good I am definitely planning a visit back to uh, the Netherlands. What was my plan? Um, so I sat down a couple times with Hunter as well because I wanted to with the uh, game kind of like put the fire back on this character this is why I'm a pundit and, and not a news reporter as a, as a, as right a this is exactly why um, I'm a pundit and not a news reporter kind of like you know jump up from that angle and uh make sure I, that uh, react to news not you know, we can get the ball rolling react to every rumor day, you know I love being in this business. I love everything, even even despite what I just said. Like you know, like we we need we we need we need people like that to, to an extent. You know what I mean? Like I love everything about this business. This business is absolutely great. It is the single best thing, alongside marrying my wife, that I've ever done in my life. You know, admitting so much, you know, committing so much time to this. You know what I mean? And it's a process that not many people can understand. Like because we are professional athletes. Every essence of the uh, every every part of the every part of what we do every part of the road is um, not Nia Jax. You know, is that of a professional? You know, we have to train a certain way, eat a certain way. Um, you know, and I think for the most part, you guys see two percent of of a road. You know, you see us in the ring for ten, fifteen, if if we're lucky, twenty minutes. You know, you see a promo here, you see a promo there. You don't see us drive away. You know, you don't see us walk backstage, beaten up, sweating, getting feedback, sometimes getting yelled at, sometimes getting pads in the back, you know, going to medical, getting yourself checked out, taking off your gear while you're hurting, taking a shower, everything hurt, your skin hurts. I want to see all that. I want to see you take a shower. Go into your car. I want to see Tommy N take a shower. I want to see Tommy N's dick. The process repeat itself again. You come home for... You know, you have a 5 a.m. flight after three or four days of, of, of wrestling. You have a 5 a.m. flight. You go back home. You're exhausted. But now you have to do your laundry. You have to do your normal things. Bills piling up. You have to pay your bills. You have to do groceries. You have to hit the gym. You have to take care of yourself. You know, mom, you definitely dad's calling. Do. Family's reaching out to see if you're okay. You're trying to have some essence of a life. You know, then at the same time, you're working. I, like, I never stop working, even today. Why would I've you? I've not stopped working. I'm always working. But it has. Excuse me about that must coming up. Um, don't throw up on us. Is, uh, don't know, throw up on us, Tommy. But it's like, you know, continuation of what, like, obviously what we're doing here. You know, it never stops. You're always, for 20 years, I've never not once not thought about wrestling. It literally consumes every aspect of my life, you know? Currently uh, thinking about, like, working on opening a wrestling school. And, uh, oh, and God, not another one. Classes before, you not know, another so, one. Um you know, trying to find places. Another guy opening a wrestling school. Get all this stuff ready so that I can train. Because I'm 36. I have a gut. Well, I'm 36. We're the same age. Um, you know, because I also have to think about, you know, training the next generation of, uh, of wrestlers, right? Uh, and I want that. I want I want to leave the wrestling business in a, in a, in a, in a, in a better spot, you know? Mm. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's something that I take great pride in that I have a nonstop attitude like i have uh and you know I'm, I'm sure you've heard this you know i've missed weddings i've missed funerals i've missed 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 birthdays i've missed my own birthday several several times um because i'm always working whether that is in the ring outside the ring at home working you know on wrestling related stuff creating content creating this creating that you know we're always busy always busy yeah you know? he didn't give the he didn't I, uh, give the scoop to anybody he's just putting it out there right now there's no alistair black you know, the sit down or the decision it's happening right now um, live on my on my career crazy you know, enough like in, in 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 you know in 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 this business he's one of the people that has like i, I consider him to be a mentor of mine 
I'm going to get back to the donations in a few minutes, guys. I know there's still some that I have not played. I'm going to play your donations in a few minutes. Thank you, by the way. Um, but I do. Um, you know, and like even talking to him and just him giving me the advice and like, you know, it's just a crazy thing to think about. You know, like how much time this like this this takes away from you. And that's like when you... Um, <laughs> I've had moments where like, and I like, I don't really, I, I mean, I know you, you notice that I'm not the most active on social media. I'm not the most active on Twitter. I'm not the most active on Instagram. You know, I'll post, I, I honestly, I, I rarely look at comments nowadays, rarely just because it's, you know. Um, <laughs> but I think about like six, seven months ago, there was a moment where someone went off and I was like, well, I'm gonna pay for your flight, come here. Hang out with me for like three days. You'll go home screaming because the work that we put in is unimaginable. And I'm not just talking about like wrestling training or like like gym training because it's so much more than that. You know, you're always on the go. Wow. You know? So um, what? I think for the most part, you as like you as a fan base, you know, you. Uh, you appreciate what we do. You appreciate who we are, and you know, I'm like, and that's the, that's the group that we focus on, and that that's the group that I'm so thankful for. It's um, it's it's a strange, strange world and a strange society that we live in nowadays with um, with how people view things, you know, like and especially this last year with like being a lockdown. I think too many people have too much time in their hands, and they're so continuously focused. And a lot of people just don't have goals or like ways in their life because they have a focus on all the wrong things and I mean this from a good place where like I hope that each and every one of you figures out what they want to do in life don't get stuck thanks for subbing Mark yeah, don't get stuck on Instagram or like falling for what social media claims it to be because it's not um, you know you, the only person that's responsible for any type of career or any type of thing that you'll do in your life is you right you don't want to like wake up 20 30 years from now going why the crap did I spend so much time arguing with people on the internet or getting so absorbed in shit that doesn't, doesn't fucking matter, you know? Um, I just hope that you guys, uh, you know, you guys know that and, uh, you know, go, go continue uh, with that, you know? Because I, I, I hope each and every one of you knows that, like, your potential in this world is, like, unlimited, right? Which is great. And it's difficult to go from, uh, you know, from being stuck in a position to like finding something. That's very difficult. I, I know how that feels. Wow. Oh, I mean, second, guys. I'm just gonna... interesting stuff from Alistair Black. Black. I think he's asking how to block somebody who's like attacking him in the chat, probably on Twitch. That's funny. That is funny. Oh, Alistair took off. Well, we'll find out where he went and what's happening in a few minutes. I'm sure Alistair Black took off. He'll be back in a, in a few, I assume. Right now, I'm going to quickly go to your donations, your reactions. We've been live now for over an hour talking about this. Um, so much to talk about. And we have we heard from Jake DeMarco, who was here earlier. I will take phone calls again. We had lots of phone calls and so much more. Uh coming up we'll see what Alistair says when he gets back but uh let's go back to the uh donos and see what you guys are saying about this Miro tipped nine dollars. Official statement on my Twitch channel is coming soon. Miro, thank you. Uh, I guess Miro was trying to tell us about Alistair Black. Uh, thank you to Miro. Uh, Alistair Black is has been live on the Twitch channel. We've been watching it for the last thirty minutes, and uh, thank you, Miro, for letting us know two hours ago. Miro tipped me off to this 
Miro, I actually saw your dono before I played it just now. So, Miro, I just want to say thank you so much to you, man, for tipping me off. We got more. Alistair Black is about to come back and make another statement. And we have more WWE releases that are rumored to happen any minute or any time soon or maybe not even till tomorrow. We don't know. But I'm keeping an eye out because apparently more news is going to drop. That's what they're saying. But like Alistair Black said, maybe the, you know, the dirt sheets are a bunch of hunk of shit. Then again, the dirt sheet said yesterday that these releases were coming and they were right. So in the very same way that he says the dirt sheets are wrong about everything, you know, there are some things that they're right about. Like he said, 5%, 15% of the time, I think they're right or they're right about things. But a lot of times what they're right about, they're just guessing. That it's obvious and they get it right because they you can tell. So they guess at it. 90% that's right. And then 15% everything else is right, too. So obviously we get that. Alistair Black is coming back here, it looks like, in a second. I'm sure at some point, like, you know, like... Uh, I'm sure know, at like, some point. Depending on how this is going to go and how this is going to how this is gonna roll, um, I would love to, you know, travel back a little bit more to Europe and, uh, you know... But, I, I, you know, guys, it's been five hours, so <laughs> I don't know. Alistair know definitely know. saying he wants to go back to Norway a bit and things like that, no doubt about it. I can't understand that. Interesting. Hey, shout out to Taz for the sub. What's up? Eric Gonzalez tipped $4. I don't understand why they released Alistair Black. What was the point of giving him a new gimmick? Yeah, again, so weird that he just got a new gimmick and he was all set on SmackDown and now he's released. Very strange. I mean, I'm sure that this came as a surprise to Bruce Pritchard. I'm sure Bruce Pritchard and the SmackDown guys were booking him for a certain way and then he's been released. Him and Heyman, they probably had ideas and someone at corporate or Vince himself was like, nope, he's done. Meanwhile, these guys just... You know what I mean? Have set up all this stuff for him to do, and they probably can't believe that he's gone. They probably are fucking shocked by it. And he, Alistair Black is shocked by it, as he said. Shit bum. Here. Z the Reaper tipped $5. What up, Z? What's up, Joe? It's messed up. Why sign people to your company if you're not going to use them and give us the same shit every week? None of it makes sense, right? I mean, Raw is especially atrocious. Uh, Z the Reaper, thank you for the $5, Z. What's up? I mean... Even even signing people to cock block them, what's the point in that if you're then releasing people anyway? You know, I don't know. I mean, the rumors of the sale of WWE are fi are just flowing rampant now. The WWE is for sale. I still think it's not the WWE for sale. I think it's WWE is looking for a buying partner. I think WWE is trying to acquire a major partner. That's what I think. I don't think it's necessarily for sale, but I keep saying that, and, you know, here we go. Aleister Black fired. Um, Braun Strowman released. Lana released. Ruby Riot released, Santana Garrett released, and of course there's uh, Blake Murphy released. Interesting stuff today, and apparently the hammer is going to drop some more from what, from what we're understanding here. Um, let's go over to the Mike Games. Thanks for subbing to the channel, Mike. What's going on? Good to see you. I've been live now for a while talking about this. A little bit of breaking news has come through. We're going to see if any more comes in. Alistair Black has commented on the situation. He's still coming back to commentate some more. Uh, Vinny Rose, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. We're talking wrestling. Uh, WWE's firings today. Alistair Black just commented on it live on his wife's Twitch channel. Vinny, thanks for the sub. Um, crazy. Crazy stuff that we're kind of finding out here. Santiri, thanks for uh, subbing to the channel. Hananen. Ridiculous. But Pooter Griffin, thanks for subbing to the channel, Pooter. What a name. Um, I mean, either way, it doesn't matter. You know, releasing people, they were never doing anything with these people anyway. Lana can't wrestle, but she's great as a manager, but they used her as a wrestler. It didn't make sense. Alistair Black, they misused Alistair Black. Uh, Kay Korea, thanks for subbing to the channel. Um, besides Aleister Black, look at Braun Strowman. They murdered R Braun Strowman. They made Braun Strowman look like a big, dumb idiot for about three years and wonder why he's garbage. WWE hurts their own talent. I mean, maybe these guys aren't the best. Fine, I agree. 
But WWE takes whatever they are and whittles them down to garbage. But in NXT, they're pretty good. Uh, Bigga1074, thanks for subbing to the channel. So it's like it's clearly the creative that destroys some part of the creative that destroys these characters and these wrestlers. Okay? MJ will rant and react. Thanks for subbing to the channel. What's going on, MJ? Uh, Braun just got to learn more promo skills. No, I just think that they give him crap promos, but maybe. I mean, I'm going to hurt you in the ring. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to break your head in the ring. Like, he's just he's ridiculous. I don't care about Braun's promos as much as I care about his decision making. Oh, I'm going to tag with a child. I'm going to tell you when I'm cashing in money in the bank, then fail at it and wonder why. That's where it all went downhill for Braun Strowman and so many of these people. Allie Butt, thanks for subbing to the channel. Uh, Jacob RP's wet in the chat. By the way, we've had over 100 subs in the past hour. It's going off right now. Crazy Blade. What's up, Crazy Blade? How you doing, man? Um, WWE's loss is my gain, I suppose. Sahil, um, thank you for subbing to the channel. I'm not even going to attempt your last name. Bahata Chariji. Uh, Sahil, thank you for subbing to the channel. Braun is finished. WWE made him look like a clown. Yes, they Dunk made him look Gino? like a clown. No doubt Don't about mind it. mind if I do. What's my name? Dunkachino. It's a whole new game. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say, Say hello, hello to my chocolate blend. If the end game here is that Vince is finally gone, then he'll continue to ride with E, but they are making it really hard to watch and care right now. I agree. Um, whatever it is, that's going on it's it's almost like they're not paying attention to the creative because they've got other things going on david cologne uh david thank you for the five dollars it really does feel like that it feels like they have something else going on and they just don't care especially on raw it's just cruise control nothing it's atrocious to watch monday night raw are they selling the company are they making a huge move we know nick khan nick khan is doing all kinds of stuff right now so is Nick Khan preparing the company for just something bigger and newer, the new corporate office that they're moving into to sell the company, the Wrestling Geeks? Thank you for subbing to the channel, Wrestling Geeks. What's going on? Uh, I don't know what the answer to that is. A just subscribed. For Christ's sake, the letter A just freaking subscribed to the channel. Why aren't you subbing? F fucking A subscribed. Anyway, um, yeah, so I, you know, I don't know. But something is they cut Ruby going but on. not Liv Morgan. Like they're ever going to do anything with her as a singles wrestler. Yeah, it's weird that Liv Morgan is still there. Ruby Riot was the better wrestler. I'm, I'm hearing that maybe her contract was up, potentially, and she didn't want to renew, and so if that's the case, then they let her go. But that could be bullshit. Ruby Riot could be pacing around her fucking house right now, uh, confused, and being like, no, I'm pissed off. I don't know what the answer to... I just know that Ruby did everything they wanted her to do. You know, they could have used her better, but they could have used everybody better. But at least Ruby got matches and, and was handled somewhat by WWE. I'm kind of shocked. You're right. Why is Liv Morgan still there, Alexa Bliss? Or Alexis... Uh, what was that? Alexis Sweet Ass or something? Shit bomb! Alexis Sweet Ass. Thank you. That was you an hour ago. A shit bomb. Trying to get through the donos here. I think they are clearing out dead talent to get in some talent that can actually get over. Maybe. That's, I mean, listen, New York Jets, maybe. What up, New York Jets? Maybe that, maybe that is what it is. But with the creative that WWE has, or with Vince McMahon's decision-making, or with the way the shows are, whoever they plug in there is going to be terrible anyway. Because nobody is really going to get over in this type of environment, it feels like. Arushan Chu. Arushan Chu is the top dog. I just want to say thank you to Arushan Chu. He dropped $25 earlier. So uh, thank you for that. If you guys want to donate, the link is down below. Stream Lab, Stream Elements. There's two different ways, credit or not, whatever. It's down below. All the donation amounts are listed as well. Um, thanks to everybody who's subbing to the channel. You can use Super Chat. If you want to give 30% to Google, you can Super Chat. Uh, Ray to Blade. Thanks for subbing to the channel, Ray to Blade. And uh, before Ray to Blade, I think I missed uh, Yogesh Kumar. What up, Kumar? Uh, so there's a lot going on right now. I'm still listening for more news. Stuff's coming in. Alistair Black is still speaking. I'm going to play a clip I got of him in a second. We got a lot of stuff going on right now. Big time. Uh, shout out to Ant Massey for subbing. Braun Strowman's fired. Oh, my God, says uh, Trey. We've been talking about this for the last hour. Braun Strowman's gone. Alistair Black's gone. Lana's gone. Shit, Ruby Riot is gone. 
You become Santana Garrett. A shit bomb. Is gone. Blake Murphy's gone. Tommy N to AU. Tommy N to AEW. Hail Metal Forever. Earlier, I suggested this is a no brainer that Tommy N could lead the Dark Order and save the Dark Order. Um, no doubt about it. He could do anything in AEW. 100% could do anything in AEW, but he could really save the Dark Order. He could be one of the only people that I think could be plugged into that, uh, you know, Brody Lee situation because nobody else can take his spot, but maybe Aleister Black can. That's what I'm thinking if I'm AEW. 314 boy, thanks for subbing to the channel. What's going on? We have a gigantic subscription party right now. The wrestling world is hard, so to speak. We're still looking for more news. Again, Aleister Black shocked by this. So shocked that he went on Twitch and has been giving his comments about this right now. Mark Mead, thanks for subbing to the channel. Man, some mead beer or whatever would be good right now. I would love some mead. But nice last name. Braun Strowman reacts to his release. Uh, we have reaction now from Braun Strowman. And uh, Sahil, thank you for subbing to the channel. What's going on, Sahil? Braun Strowman reacts to his release. What a chapter in life. Thank you. Well, there you go. I mean, it is a hell of a chapter for you. No doubt about shit it. Shit bomb! Wonder what will happen next you for Braun Strowman. You become a shit bomb. I haven't been watching. Why did Braun get fired? I mean, they really haven't done anything with Braun that's been good for a while. And Will Tactics, it just it's just a big talent dump today. It's just a huge talent dump, Will Tactics. Probably heard me say it by now, but, you know, Will Braun Strowman, Aleister Black, Lana, all let go. Ruby Riot let go. Santana Garrett, Blake Murphy, all let go. So I'm assuming that that's what you know, the reason is, is just, I mean, the guy's damaged goods. That's the real, I mean, I just, the Aleister Black one's weird again because he's in a storyline. You know what I mean? He just started a storyline. So it's it's funny that, you know, they would get rid of him at this point. Uh, Lucas S456, thanks for something to the channel. Lucas, uh, more on Aleister Black, 339-226-6610. The phone lines are open again. If you guys want to call, we have more comments from Aleister Black coming. So, we'll see about that. Riggs Oil, thanks for subbing to the channel. Give me some oil, bro. We're going to need oil uh, coming up in the future. Who should be next to be uh, released by WWE? Let us know in the chat. A lot of people want to talk about it. A lot of people have their ideas about who's going to get released next. And I see it in the chat already. El Savage, buenos tardes. El Savage, thanks for subbing to the channel. Much appreciated. Um, 908, I hung up on you. My bad, brother. Uh, 912's on the phone, though. What's up, 912? Yo, what's up, Joe? What's going on, man? You know what the problem is with Raw and SmackDown to me? What's that? Is that they need to bring back the Rufus Aggression Era. Like, they really do. They need to bring back the GMs, start with the gimmick pay-per-views, get new creative, like, merge the tag team division and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think that even if you didn't do that, I think if you just started writing better week-to-week -week stories, I think it starts with that. You start writing better stories, better promos, and then if you want to go into ruthless aggression and stuff, that's the next thing. But right now, you could just be better if you just made the stories better every week. This is why I like AEW better. They have better characters that people can get behind on, like Adam Page, like Hey Man Adam Page, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, John Moxley, and that people, and those people. Well, see, I don't even think that, I think WWE does have good characters or potential characters, but they don't do anything with them and they ruin them, you know? I mean, what's, what's you know, I mean, like, what's, you know, some of those guys, what's Kenny Omega's character, you know what I mean, that he's a dildo? I mean, you know, I but I like Kenny Omega, but I mean, what's, you know, some, it's like, what's the character? WWE actually has these characters and then they don't do anything with them. Um, you know, but AEW has guys that are more realistic with a slight bit of charisma and character and they they're doing better, you know, than WWE, like you just said, because they at least are creative with them all. So, yeah. I don't understand it. It's like what what's, you know, Adam Hangman Page character that he drinks, you know, it's like but they still do better because they connect with the crowd. And they're allowed to do it, and they're allowed to have good promos, or they're allowed to try promos. They're allowed to have different things go on every week. WWE just goes, hey, you go out, 
wrestle guy and you get in feud because someone hates you and then you go out every week for four weeks and do that and then you guys have a match at pay-per-view and then we then we have the match again the night after the pay-per-view and then we do another thing with you guys until people want to die and it goes nowhere and you fall asleep so i mean you're kind of right you know but wwe just beat just does the same thing different ways like 10 times and you fall asleep it's like more than ever, wrestling needs to be, let's go. Let's go. Okay, Aleister Black, this guy gets in a feud. Something happens. Okay, they, they they cut promos on each other. They attack each other. They cut promos on each other. Then they have the match at the pay-per-view. But with everybody, it's like guy wrestles guy. Guy has a problem with guy. Guy wrestles guy again. Guy gets in fight with guy. Guy wrestles guy again. Guy wrestles guy at the pay-per-view. Guy has rematch after pay-per-view. Guy cuts promo on the guy, and then they have another match that night after pay-per-view. And by then, you're like, I want to die. What are you doing, WWE? You don't know what you're doing. Or you know you're putting me to sleep? I don't know. I'm confused. BWX Massage. Thank you for subbing to the channel. Appreciate that. What's going on? Whew. All right. We got more donos coming in. We're going to get to those. We got lots of phone calls coming in again. It's going crazy. Uh, Slago Craner Jelly something. Just subscribe to the channel. What a name that is. More creative than the WWE at this point. Braun Strowman reacts to his release. What a chapter in life, he says. Thank you. Interesting. What a chapter in life. Thank you, Braun Strowman. Athul uh, Krishna. Thank you very much for subbing to the channel. Uh, much appreciated. It's the Joe Cronin Show. We're live after every single WWE event, AEW event, all week long since 2012 here on YouTube. Joseph Kinlaw. Thanks for subbing to the channel, man. Lots of people copied the show. Lots of people um, will go to hell for it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking about that. I'm just messing around. Uh, but I've been here a while, Tom. Yeah, no doubt about it. Since... Um, 2012, man. Go back and look at all the videos, no doubt. Thanks for uh, checking it out. Glad you're back. You haven't seen the show in eight years? Jesus. That's crazy. Uh, DJ Cauley. What's going on, DJ? Spin me something. The WWE spinning their talent right out of here. I don't know why Ruby Riot is released. She actually was doing stuff. Liv Morgan is not released. Why really? I mean, Dunk whatever. Gino. They weren't doing don't anything with anyone. Anyway. if I do. What's my name? Dunkachino. It's a whole new game. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. If only they really sponsored the show. I feel like there is something sus going on with the WWE finances. Yes. Maybe Vince lost a lot more with the XFL than we thought. You know, <coughs> I don't think so because H King Five, thanks for subbing to the channel. I don't think so because. You know, Vince took out a certain amount of stocks and a certain amount of money that he knew he could lose. Vince knew he could lose all that money, and it, it's not going to make a difference. And Vince still has so many stocks. I mean, I, I don't I don't buy into that at all. I think he, he was prepared to lose the XFL completely. You become... I don't think that matters. A shit bomb. Jim Cornette said the stadium stampede match was embarrassing. Well, Jim Cornette is a no-fun asshole. Uh, Todd Fair, thank you for the $20, man. Thank you, Todd Fair. May I remind you that Jim Cornette thinks that you should not be listening to me right now? Uh, Todd Fair, thank you so much for the $20, though, man. That is a that is a drop, brother. 20 bucks coming in from Todd Fair, keeping my shows alive. Shit thank you. Bomb. Thank you, man. Thank you. Become thank you. A shit bomb. Why did I do that? Just getting off work, Joe WTF is going on. A lot of people released uh, Tattling Rug. Thanks for the four ninety nine. So many people released. So much stuff going on. More releases allegedly to come. Alistair Black gone. We heard from Alistair Black live on his Twitch channel earlier. Braun Strowman, Lana, Alistair Black, Santana Garrett, Ruby Riot. I can't wait. Man, I would. Oh, I'm going to drop one on her. Shit um, bomb. Oops. You become a shit bomb. Bring up LA Knight and Cross now. I think they are finally looking at the ratings and saying F this. VKM putting AU in a position to burn their dollar. Well, New York Jets, they really don't have to burn their dollar too much, in my opinion, because New York Jets, um, 
I mean, these guys are released, so I mean, W, you know, AEW could offer them a hundred thousand dollars and they'd sign because where else are they going to sign for that amount of money? You know, so it's actually going to save them money to bring in major talent potentially, right? They could bring in all. They could eight, Luis Hernandez. Thanks for subbing. Uh, they could bring in all three of these people on your screen right now, and they could bring them in for eighty thousand dollars. They could bring them in for two hundred thousand dollars, whatever they want. Shit bomb. As long as the wrestler says yes to it, you become. They got him. A shit bomb. Who, where else are they going to go? They're let go. BD Skeleton, longtime supporter. BD Skeleton. Thanks for dropping the dollar, man. Appreciate it. Todd Fair before that. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I wouldn't listen. Would you really listen to Jim Cornette on the fact that he thinks the stadium stampede sucks? Listen, I love Jim Cornette, and I think he's right about a lot of things, and I'm entertained by him thoroughly. And I hope you hit the like button and stick the thumb up my ass. Guys, if you not hit the like button and stuck the thumb up my ass, do it down below. Shit what are you doing? Bomb. Um, Jacob R.P. You become a shit bomb. Aw, thank you, Jacob R.P. for the 99 cents. Appreciate it, brother. You know, Jim Cornette hates this show, hates me. You know what I mean? So you're watching me. Why would you do that? Jim Cornette says I suck. Um, I, I, but the, only after he was on the show several times, now all of a sudden it's a problem. You know, so very strange. But, you know, you get, you get the point. You get the deal. Let's hear from Jim Cornette. I mean, you don't, you want to hear what Jim Cornette said about the show? Listen, you stupid fuck. He looks like a one of those guys that from Long Island that wants to be a white Jared. rapper, but he's 30-something years old, lives Gerard. in his parents' basement with the droopy cap and the whatever, but he thinks he's Howard Stern, and he's got a cool way of talking in the microphone, uh, and he's a shock jock or whatever, and somehow or another he accumulates followers on the on Twitter is fucking pathetic so please nobody listen to anything involving a guy named Joe Cronin because it's just so fucking sad uh, it's not what you said the first couple times we, we met Jim Cornette you cocksucker Jim Cornette um, Alistair Black, uh, Braun Strowman, Lana released from the WWE, Ruby Riot released as well, Santana Garrett released, Blake Murphy also released I believe Blake Mur Murphy was released because uh, Alexa saw him, sees him in the hallway and thinks of her pig. I mean, that's a sick thing, but I honestly believe that could be what it is. I'm dead serious. Uh, Leanna Lynn, thanks for subbing to the channel. But uh, that is awful what happened to, to Alexa's pig, though, man. I feel horrible for her. And it's just she lost a family member, basically. Shit bomb! So that's terrible. You become I see why. Shit bomb. It's, it's sad. Braun can be another big green dinosaur for you. Well, I mean, get rid of, um, get rid of, uh, no, Jacob RP, what's up? Get rid of that, the other guy who's basically is Braun Strowman. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the Murder Hawk. Get rid of the Murder Hawk. What's his name? Uh, everybody dies in a nothing. It's like, hey, bro, guess what? Everybody doesn't die because every single time Lance Archer steps in an AEW ring, the fact of the matter is, Lance Archer, your shoulders are pinned to the canvas and you lose. So not only does everybody not die, but you never win. So everybody dies. Lance Archer needs to go. Lance Archer is AEW's Braun Strowman. He sucks on promos. He's weirdly goofy on promos. And then he goes out and loses, yet his tagline is, Everybody dies. <laughs> oh, do they? You fucking can't win a wrestling match. You asshole idiot. Get out of AEW. And bring in Braun Strowman, who in WWE was like, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you that I'm cashing in money in the bank next week. And I'll be there. Ugh. Why would Braun Strowman tell everybody he's cashing in? What a stupid thing to do. I don't care. I don't need to surprise you. Ugh. Oh, I lost. I, ugh, I'm an idiot. It's like you killed Braun Strowman's character because he was an idiot. Lance Archer's character is killed as an idiot. I see this as a perfect opportunity for a talent switch. Get Braun Strowman to be super serious, come to AEW. Get Lance Archer to go to WWE and shut his goddamn mouth. And never say those words again, especially those... I mean, it looks like Kurgan, let's be honest. Everybody dies. <laughs> and then I lose every time. So how do you say everybody dies? How do you continuously say everybody dies, Lance Archer? I want to know why everybody dies every time, but you lose with your shoulders pinned. One, two, three. Every time. I mean, what kind of promo can Lance Archer cut going forward at this point in AEW? 
Let me tell you something. I'm coming for you, Cody Rhodes, because everybody dies. Oh, oh, uh, Lance, that's really cute. Did uh, everybody die when you lost last week to this guy? Did everybody die when two months ago you said everybody dies and you lost to this other guy? Oh, take a look at this. Everybody, you know what? Everybody doesn't die, Lance Archer. You know what happens? Everybody pins you. That's what happens. Everybody pins you, and yet you sell to these fans that there's going to be a murder in the ring, and you can't even win a wrestling match. You're the murder hawk, right? Who have you killed? Hell, who have you pinned in the ring? That's right. Shut your big, goofy, stupid mouth. Take your fucking gigantic size that's worth a damn. Shut up. In fact, you know what? Why don't you just come in the ring right now and lay down so I can pin you, and I can just be added to the list of people that you told was going to die, and then they pinned you. How about that? You know what? Your, your, your slogan should be, every time I lose. That's what it should be. Ah, I can't wait to get in the ring with you because every time I lose. I'm calling you that. Loser. We just call you loser. <laughs> every time you lose. Every time I lose. <laughs> yeah. Probably you should shut your mouth at this point, Lance Archer. Shut your mouth and let Jake the Snake Roberts speak for you. You stupid asshole idiot. You are a mongoloid at this point. 304, you're live on the Joe Cronin Show. What's going on? So it's Omni. Omni, what's going on, dude? No, a whole lot. Hey, here's the thing. Is it kind of obvious that uh, they're playing on sell off the WWE wants McMahon dollars? Isn't it kind of obvious? Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. I, 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 I still am 50 50. I still real. I believe something's happening. I do. I just don't know uh, if are they are they preparing to sell the company or are they preparing? I believe so. But I think they're preparing for a partner to come in. So I think they're inviting a partner to come in to own a big portion of the company. And so when Vince leaves, that partner will be involved as well in bigger, a bigger uh, situation. I don't, but I don't know if they're outright completely just getting rid of their company. I don't think. I mean, it, it's sad that to see a company that I've watched for over 20 years just put wrestling on the back burner like they have. Well, listen. In the past few years, I haven't watched since the Royal Rumble of last year. All you have to do is watch Monday Night Raw to see how much WWE sucks right now. I don't want to put myself under that fucking uh, uh, torture. I, I can't know. fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, it's just they. I really think that they want to become an entertainment conglomerate. Um, getting rid of Jack Johnson and old all these old timers. It's just weird. Malenko, Arn Anderson. Mm-hmm. And bringing back these stooges like uh, Laurinaitis. Right. It, it's, just, it's sad. They're, it's they're, sad. they're all the wrong moves. Ultra all safe the wrong mode. Moves. They're, they're, they're in ultra safe mode. It's very yeah. strange. Yeah. And just moving to corporate and all their little um, uh, endeavors into, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Uh, Philanthropy, all the stuff that they've been pushing. I, I just think that they want to get away from wrestling, and that's just my two cents. Uh, first time being on the show. Thanks for having me on. Man. Hey, man. Uh, good stuff, Omni. Good to hear from you. Good good call, man. Call anytime, brother. Uh, 339-226-6610. Arushan Chu is the top dog. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'm still live in the office right now. In the middle of the day, I was doing some stuff outside with the kids, and this breaking news happened. I'm still here live. We had Jake DeMarco on the show earlier. Tons of other people on the show. Uh, Alistair Black has commented on this live on Twitch, and we played some of that. I've got more of that coming up as he continues to speak about why he was fired, why he was like, oh, he's confused, he's shocked. So many more comments. Shit bomb! Coming in. You become... Oh, shit. A shit bomb. Todd Fair. I think WWE stinks, but I can't get into AU because I think AU is a wild indie show and Kenny Twinkle Toes McFinger Bang as champion. It's embarrassing he can't wrestle. You know, Todd Fair, I thank you so much for the $40, and I wish the Ryback was still the donation for that. Um, if anybody wants to donate $32, that's the Ryback rap. Maybe I'll play that for you, Todd, since you dropped $40. I appreciate that. I, I, I know that you don't like, uh, you know, Kenny Omega. I get it. I like Kenny Omega. I, I think he's he's missing that little bit of, uh, you know, what you want, Todd. And I know that he's a little twinkle toesy and whatever, but I still think he's good compared to watching WWE. So I enjoy w AEW for the when they're bad, it's great. When they're good, it's good. 
I like that AEW feels like anything can happen and, and they're willing to risk things. Sometimes they do stupid shit. Sometimes they do bad things. But it's fun to rant and react to AEW way more than WWE. WWE is so boring and stale. It is so just heart-wrenching and abysmal and sad and just enraging to watch Raw. It's just devoid of excitement. So, you know, it's just... Even if AEW is a car wreck, it's more entertaining than WWE. Like, that's the thing. But I, I get what you're saying, and I know that Cornette, Cornette has a lot of good points. He does. But he also has a lot of points, I think, where he just needs to relax a little bit. But either way, I understand it. And uh, Todd, thank you for the $40, man. Uh, that's a big, that, that is going to take over the top dog spot of Aru Shin Chu. Uh, you're a beast. You did give 30% to Google, though, but I'll take it. I need the money, goddammit. Otherwise, I can't do shit. Uh, thank you guys for keeping me on the air and keeping me, um, keeping my shows afloat and always pumping it in like you guys do. And to the new people, we're live almost every single day on this channel. And I have multiple other channels where we talk about non-wrestling stuff, including me and Jake DeMarco's podcast that's going to be going up on Patreon uh, this week. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Over 25 hours of bonus content a month that you do not get here on YouTube on Patreon, plus shows uh, converted to audio so you can save your data plan on your phone. Got to get that plug out there. Guys, don't forget EC3 was on the show the other day. He was here on the show. And EC3 has a new show, a new movie out called Free the Narrative on uh, Vimeo. And if you go to Vimeo to, to watch Free the Narrative, you get 20% off when you use my coupon code FREECRONIN. Use coupon code FREECRONIN on freethenarrative.com and watch EC3's one hour and 20 minute movie. I told you I liked it. I actually do like it, guys. That's not, I would have buried it if it sucked and I would have brought EC3 on to tell it to his face. And I want you guys to tell EC3 to his face what you think about it. He wants to know from you guys. So EC3 is li you know, listening, standing by for the feedback. I have a full review coming on that. But anyway, back to the news. Uh, Aleister Black fired by WWE. Braun Strowman, Lana, uh, Santana Garrett, and uh, so many more uh, let go. Virage, thanks for subbing to the channel, man. Appreciate it. And we expect that there could be more news. There could be more releases. There could be more shit that goes down. 216, hello. Hey, what's going on, Joe? Hey, what's up, man? JTS Army. What's up? The chat's wet. Give him a 69 in the chat. Everybody's horny. Yeah, it's Quest. What's going on? Hey. What's up? So, number one, fuck Jim Cornette. All right. Everybody knows that. Damn. I mean, come on now. Number two, I don't know what's going on with Vince. What's going on with Vince, Joe? I don't know. On? I mean, he's been in cruise control mode for so long, man, that it, I don't know, man. It almost feels like, I don't know. It just feels weird. It feels weird that he's been in this cruise control mode and that they're doing all this stuff at corporate. Yo, but, I got to tell you, man, I got to tell you, I have woke up this morning at about 9.40 a. Or, I mean, three, three. Damn, I'm high. I have to smoke a blunt. I swear to God, because I cannot believe the talent, the talent that is going to be just let go, just release, just just go. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> well, they barely did anything with them anyway. I mean, but yeah, I'm a little shocked. But I mean, these people all sucked anyway. I mean, they made them. They they didn't suck originally. Like Braun Strowman came in, he didn't suck. Alistair Black came in, he was great. Lana was great when she started with Rusev. They have ruined like, all these on. people. Like, Joe, I have been listening to your channel and subscribe for about five years, okay? Yeah. Going on six. So I've been listening to you, watching every video after every show, and you telling me I've been watching these su superstars through the years. In NXT, they were treated right. Creative, going well, match after match, okay, championship after championship, okay, you're going up great. And then <laughs> when you get to the main roster, you know what Vince does? You already know what Vince does. I he know. He puts you there and treats you like shit. And then, and then what? Then what? You relate. This is what you do. Go off. Tell him. Tell hell? him. Tell him all. Trip, I, I, don't, I just want to know what – I just want to know how it feels to be – Vince's son-in-law as Triple H. I just want to know what is going through his mind. Like, I just want to know, is he is he really just okay with this? I agree. I don't know what he's doing. 
And I'm going to take over the mic now because I've heard enough and I've seen enough and I'm ready to go. This call has got me fired up. Vince, you really, you really think that this is what you want to do? Vince, you want to see Joe Cronin freak out Vince McMahon? Is this what you want? You want to kill your company? Fine. Go ahead. You want to kill yourself? Fine, Vince McMahon. You want to end yourself? Go ahead, Vince McMahon, and end yourself. But the fact of the matter is, Triple H had Alistair back. Black built up to be a damn legend in this company. Triple H had this man. He had the music. He had the look. He had the entrance. He had the vibe. Hell, he even had it when he came up onto your main roster. And what did you do, Vince McMahon? You took that vibe. You took that character. And Vince McMahon, I believe you. You solely, Vince McMahon, you killed it. You killed your own damn creation. Vince McMahon, you did it. And you had Lana, who was a wonderful valet and a wonderful manager for Rusev. And Vince McMahon, what did you do to Aleister Black? What did you do to Lana? You did the same thing you did to Aleister Black, Vince. You took Lana, who was an, a 7 out of 10 manager, and you turned her into a 2 out of 10 wrestler. That's right, Vince McMahon. You took Lana, and you killed her. Vince McMahon, you killed her. Because that's what you do. You take things and you kill them. Now, Vince McMahon, at one time, you used to create them. You used to give them a a place to create their own character. You used to grow talent, create talent. But now, Vince McMahon, you're nothing but a damn destroyer. That's what you are now, Vince McMahon. You're a damn destroyer. That's what you do. You destroy things. How about Ruby Riot? Looking pretty good, comes up, and you just keep her in no man's land. But look at Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman. Gigantic man. Potential. Huge. Athletic. Here comes Braun Strowman looking like a beast in the Wyatt family. And he's a fire. He is huge. He is destruction himself in the ring. Braun Strowman has everything you think that Vince McMahon would love. And what does Braun Strowman get? What does Vince McMahon do to Braun Strowman? Vince McMahon turns Braun Strowman into a retard. That's what Vince McMahon does. I'm going to tell you when I'm cashing in my money in the bag. Oh, I messed this up. I messed that up. I can't do anything. Oh, I'm a big goof. Choo-choo train's coming. Oh. For the last three years, Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon, you spent three years killing Braun Strowman. And anybody with a brain knows that you killed him. Vince McMahon, you freaking killed Braun Strowman over the course of three freaking years. Vince McMahon, you killed Braun Strowman. How do you explain that? How do you explain killing Braun Strowman? I don't know how you explain it. I don't know. I mean, is it some kind of joke? I don't know. AEW Golden has subscribed to the channel. Thank you, AEW Golden. Much appreciated. What's up? Welcome to the channel. I hope you're ready to be insane. I think Alistair Black might still be speaking. I'm not 100%. He might be done. I don't know. Yeah, I think he's done. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, let's see. We'll see if he, if I have, oh no he's done all right well I'm gonna go through the the rest of his uh, the rest of everything that he talked about and said and I will uh, try to give you guys an update about what I think about everything else he said everybody's fired uh, you might be right oh my God what a show tonight it's been crazy um, I I gotta get out of here I didn't expect to be on this long thanks to everybody in the chat if you're new to the channel I hope you hit that subscribe button down below. Uh. And I hope you guys are here with me after AEW. Not tonight, because AEW is Friday night for now, for the time being. Friday nights will be SmackDown, AEW, until it's back on Wednesdays. And Saturday night, I'm live with the most shocking, controversial show ever on YouTube. Monetize this. Episode 300 and whatever it is. 320 coming up on Saturday? Huh? For over 10 years, right here on YouTube, it's the Joe Cronin Show. 
That's why the companies won't hire me as the commentator, because I'm that savage. Fuck the SJWs. I'm the shit. I'm the shit, Tony Khan. Come on. Fine. Do whatever you like. I don't care. Shit bomb. Here's really mysterious. You become... Trying to keep me, bomb. trying to keep me on the air, really mysterious. R.I.P. Vince McMahon, shares Welsh and Bullfrog. Yes, rest in peace to D. Welsh. Well, D. Welsh was on the show yesterday. He had a good time. Uh, he donated over a hundred dollars. Thanks to D. Welsh. Really mysterious. Thank you. Black Bolt in the chat actually has a great comment here. Um, we got to read it, man. It's worth. It's it's such a good comment. I happen to catch it. Um, bring Aaliyah and she, God. Aaliyah has been working for five years in NXT. Aaliyah has been working for five years in NXT. Bring Aaliyah from NXT up and pair her with Liv Morgan. That's interesting. Um, oh, God, what did he say? Already best friends. Then WWE will release them as well. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's a good point. Yeah, they'll just release them again. Hey, here's another tag team. Let's break them up. Hey, here's another tag team. Hey, let's break them up. Let's break up another tag team. Keep breaking up tag teams. Right? That's what we do. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the love. Thanks for subbing. Hit the like button on your way out and stick the thumb up my ass. I hope you guys can share this video everywhere. Say, this guy's unbelievable. He's crazy. He's an idiot. He's paler than Casper the Friendly Ghost. Um, send out my videos all over Twitter, all over wherever, Reddit, dildojuice.com, whatever you want to send it to. Tell you all your friends. Tell all your family. Go on Facebook. Take $5 from your own credit card and create Facebook ads and point people to my show. It's YouTube.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Follow me on Instagram, Instagram.com slash Joe Cronin Show, and Twitter, uh, at JCS Commentary on Twitter. Shout out to Todd Fair uh, for being the top uh, dog, $40 dono. Thank you, brother. We're live after every single WWE Raw, SmackDown, AEW. Um, and, of course, after all the pay-per-views, we're going to be live this Saturday for Monetize This, plus Floyd Money Mayweather fight this weekend. We're going to be covering it live here and being cunts on this show so if you don't, if you can't de deal with the vulgarity and the crazy, um, you won't like my show to all the noobs out there. But happy Pride Month to all our friends who scissor or or butt pump. We love you so much. Everybody deserves to love, no matter who you are, and get married. So happy Pride Month to all you people out there with the Pride stuff. And my birthday's in June, so I may have to leave my wife and go find John and sniff his ass. Um, I'm down for anything if you are. Let's go. It's uh, the Joe, Joe if you're Cronin listening, Show. you stupid fuck. He looks like a one of those guys that from Long Island that wants to be a white rapper, but he's 30-something years old, lives in his parents' basement with the droopy cap and the whatever, but he thinks he's Howard Stern, and he's got a cool way of talking in the microphone, uh, and he's a shock jock or whatever, and somehow or another he accumulates followers on the on twitter's fucking pathetic so please nobody listen to anything involving a guy named joe cronin because it's just so fucking sad make sure to follow me on twitch twitch.tv slash evil spectrum 3 and my other channels all listed below in the description. Also, you can email me, JoeCronShow at Yahoo.com. I'll see you guys later. And to all the haters, kiss my ass!